and a very good afternoon from Steve Ellison Field. It's the 2018 version of the Egg Bowl. It's a Casa Grande Gauchos and a Petaluma Trojans. And a very good evening, a good afternoon, everyone. I am Griffin Epstein here live for the game of the year in Petaluma sports. It always is when these two crosstown rivals battle in varsity football. There was a six year hiatus after the game was stopped in 2011. It was brought back last year for the first time and the Trojans won a thriller at Costa Grande last year, a 20 to 14 victory. Now it's the first game since 2011 here at Steve Ellison Field. This place is jam packed. It is a huge community event and it should be a terrific game between two very, very strong teams. Casa Grande is three and six overall, but the record very deceiving. They played well lately. They have the same record as Petaluma and the BBAL at three and two. They're coming off a close loss to American Canyon last week, but the Trojans have beaten all the same teams Cost has beaten and lost all the same teams Cost has beaten. The winner of this game will finish third alone in BBAL. We expect it to be very even between two game teams that are coming in very confident, but both coaches feel like they haven't put a complete game together this year. If both teams can do that, we have a certain classic. It should be tight throughout. Rivalry games are always tight, but these teams also seem to be very even. One very big storyline, however, for this game, and it's been kept under covers, but it developed in the last few days. Starting quarterback for the Trojans, senior Cole Powers, will not, will not start this game for Petaluma. He is sick, he is in uniform, and we do expect him to play this afternoon. But Jack Hartman, the sophomore, will get his first start ever on the varsity football team in the biggest game of his life and in the biggest game of the year in Petaluma sports. It's going to be a lot of pressure on the sophomore quarterback. He's not played a meaningful snap all year. He's only seen some action late in garbage time two different times this year. He's also worked his way back from some injuries, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Hartman does but we'll also likely see Cole Powers at some point at the quarterback position. He is not fully healthy. He's still very much under the weather, but he's trying to tough it out. Both teams have headed back to the locker room. We're expecting them to run out onto the field. This place is absolutely packed. Can we get another shot at the field again? This place is absolutely packed. Casa Grande has brought their student section and their band on the roadside, while the Petaluma student section is also filling up the band here as well for them. There is not going to be a seat to be had. There's lots of food. It's a full community event. It's lots of uh, Three Twins ice cream is here. A lot of uh, tents and uh, it is jam packed and a community event that is waiting for all year long. And it's a beautiful day as well between for this Egg Bowl. Last year, these teams played when they did not face, when they were not in the same league before realignment, put both Casa and Petaluma in the VVAL. So they played last year on September 16th, and the Trojans won a low-scoring affair, 20-14. to 14. You could tell the nerves were a factor in that game. It was a huge deal, but Petaluma's defense came through in the end. A couple turnovers were big as well, and the Trojans were able to find a way to victory. Turnovers could be key in this one as well. Petaluma coming off a four-turnover day against Napa in their victory last Friday night here at Ellison Field while Casa was also plagued by turnovers in their loss to American Canyon. So watch turnovers and watch mistakes in this game. In a game of this magnitude, who can hold their poise, who can battle through the tension and be mistake free is one of the most important things. And this game has certainly been hyped up by both sides. There's a lot riding, both bragging rights, but also a lot on the football field. Third in VDAL and also for NCS playoff implications, Petaluma currently sitting at 10th, according to Max Preps. As you see, the Casa Grande Gauchos head out onto the field with their flag. Petaluma had a flag last year, planted at midfield. Casa is going to do the same thing here. No, they're not going to plant it at midfield. The JV team for Casa won. They planted the flag at midfield. They just fly it around. But you can say Casa is hyped up and ready to go as they're greeted by the fans that have made the trip from the east side. Jack Green, the senior middle linebacker, was the one waving the flag, and now we'll await the Petaluma Trojans. They're in new black uniforms. The same NCS is vital for Casa Grande. They're currently ranked 17th in NCS Division II, a win, and they're likely into the NCS playoffs, a loss, and their season is likely over. So it's almost like a playoff game here for Casa, for Petaluma. 
a win, and they very well might get a home playoff game. They're currently ranked 10th, a loss, and they will certainly be on the road in NCS and likely against much harder competition. So for the rest of the year, this game is vital as well. But no matter the record, this is always the most important game of the season. Couple minutes away from kickoff, head coach Rick Crystal has Petaluma back in the locker room as the Trojans are looking to go to back-to-back -back Egg Bowl victories for the first time since 2008 and 2009 after their 20-14 victory last year. Six-year hiatus. And only the second game back is the first game here at Steve Ellison Field for the Egg Bowl since 2011, which was very ugly. But there's also the new amenities to Steve Ellison Field. Make this game feel even bigger as well. The new turf field, the purple end zones, the redesigned stands make it a lot of fun and much anticipated. A great atmosphere. Feel free to comment in the live chat. We expect a large audience for this one as we bring this to you live. Egg Bowl officially named the Egg Bowl in 1993, but these teams first met all the way back in 1974. This is their 38th meeting between the two crosstown rivals. Petaluma leads the series between the two varsity football squads 24 to 14, but Casa Grande has been the stronger team of late. Eight, five. Isaiah Blomgren tuning on in all the way from Maryland, former wide receiver who helped slay the Gauchos last year in the Egg Bowl. We expect many to be tuning in all over the country for this one. Always a Saturday afternoon game under the bright sun. It's beautiful weather. It's about 70 degrees, a slight breeze blowing across the field as here come the Petaluma Trojans varsity football team and their black unis. Well, just the captains actually, but you can see those black uniforms. The four captains for Petaluma, Garrett Freitas, Derek Pony, Nick Ayers, Daniel DeCarly, four seniors. The captains will meet. Obviously, Coach Chris talking to the team a long time in the locker room. This game means a lot, but you got to hold your poise and just play your best, even though the rivalry implications are huge. And you can. You can, you can focus away from football, but you got to focus on the football aspect of this game. Petaluma also on a three-game winning streak. Has to feel very good. Here are the Petaluma Trojans. Packed student section on the Petaluma side, and they're purple and white, and it's blackout uniforms. First time that we see in Petaluma ever in these new uniforms just for the Egg Bowl. They look pretty sweet. They are popping. As the final regular season game here for both teams, NCS playoff positioning will be decided tomorrow. Captains are meeting at midfield. Was in issue free last year. There were no issues at all. One unsportsmanlike, and it was quickly cleared up. We hope that there are no, no fights, no words, no unsportsmanlikes. It's a clean game, but that was an issue, and it's awaited to be seen. There have been some incidences, or at least tensions, at other games between the two sides. So it'll be interesting this, to watch the tension between both sides and see if both teams hold their cool, especially with two very intense volleyball games, Egg Bowl volleyball games, in the last two months. We're going to get the national anthem in just a minute, let's listen in to PA announcer Matthew Baldwin as the Pedal High School Band is going to play the national anthem.
rendition by the terrific Petaluma High School marching band. They were at Santa Cruz last week and won a couple of awards there in marching. They do a terrific job. Casa Grande Marching Band is also here, so you have plenty of music besides just the football. Cheerleaders are here, lots of signs and banners, and well over a thousand fans have packed in here for the first Egg Bowl at Ellison Field since 2011. All right, let's get a little bit more into the game. Where are the keys? And we already talked about Jack Hartman starting at quarterback for Petaluma, but the key could be on the other side of the football with Casa Grande and their quarterback, Jaden Borsard. She is a very talented quarterback, thrown through over a thousand yards this year, and he can torch some defenses. It's been up and down for the Petaluma defense. What kind of Petaluma defense? Will we see in this game? Will it be the first half against Napa last week where they completely shut down a good Grizzlies team? Or is it the second half we saw against Napa last week where Napa put up 21 points against the Trojan defense who prides himself on their line? But the secondary is going to need to be big to slow down Borsage and a trio of very talented wide receivers on Casa Grande, Nick Bussey, Jordan Gramajo, and Dominic McHale. Casa Grande... Will receive first, Daxton Hagia to kick it away. It's the 2018 Varsity Egg Bowl. Both sides have been waiting well over a year for this one since it was last played in September. Trojans in black, Casa in white. Here we go. And the Egg Bowl's underway. It's a short squibber by Hagia. It stays in bounds. And a nice tackle by the Petaluma special teams to bring down Casa Grande at the 30-yard line. Short squib kick by Hagia was effective, and Casa couldn't do anything with it. So we will see Jordan Borsage and that Casa Grande offense first. And the senior Borsage, who did not play the Egg Bowl last year, has really supplanted himself as the top quarterback all this Gaucho TV is 102 for 191, so over a 500 completion percentage, very accurate. He's averaging 128 yards per game. It's a spread it out passing attack for Casa Grande. They're going to test this pedal of defense. First snap is a handoff up the middle and little room to go. It was Matt Herrera who's the leading Running back for Casa Grande, 464 rushing yards coming into the game for Herrera. But Casa's really struggled to establish their run, rushing attack a lot of the year. They definitely played better in the VDAL than they did in their non-conference. And part of that has been an improved rushing attack, but it's not something head coach Dennis Brung is confident in for the Gauchos. Borsarge got time. He looks downfield and it's intercepted. Garrett Freitas picks it off at the 35. It was a jump ball on the most athletic player on the field. Garrett Freitas picks it off at cornerback. And a poor decision by Borsarge looking for a senior wide receiver, Nick Bussey. Freitas with another interception on his season. His only return to defense last game against Napa. As they've been worried about his ankle, so Jordan coaches hadn't put him out on defense. But... He is a spectacular defender. It's his third interception of the year. He had a two interceptions against Montgomery in the season opener. He's a lockdown quarterback. And the athletic play there to pick off a poorly thrown ball. So the Trojan offense will take over. And Connor Pedersen jogs off some issue with equipment. So Jack Hartman will take his first meaningful snap of his career in a huge moment with eyes on him. He is only a sophomore. Don't expect to see too many passes from him as Freitas up the middle maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Hartman, 3 for 8 for 24 yards passing-wise. His only quarterback action was the third and fourth quarters against El Molino in a blowout victory for Petaluma and also against American Canyon in the fourth quarter when that game got out of hand. He can run. He's a very athletic rusher. He played well against El Molino, rushing the football for 46 yards against the Lion defense. And Hartman will run it. Fakes it, and he takes off. Hartman's got rope down the sideline. It's a foot race, and the sophomore quarterback steps out of bounds. 
Casa Defenders were gaining on him, and he's smart play not to take a big hit. But the sophomore Jack Carmen looks comfortable and confident out of the opening gate here as he goes 45 yards down the field, all the way down to about the 20 yard line. Excellent blocking by the Trojan offensive line as well. Spot the ball at the 24, and the Trojans quickly in action. Hartman 5'11", 145, hard to bring down, long and lengthy, up the middle. And another big chunky yardage, this time from Colton Prieto, the running back. And that will be another first down into the Casa red zone. And down to the 14-yard line. We've got all, all sorts of people tuning on in, apparently. Bell's, Bell's tuning in, Gavin tuning in, Chase, all the way from West Virginia? Wow. Oh. <laughs> Hand off to Prieto. No, it's the fake to Hartman, and it did not work. Casa read the read option there well. Nice tackle by number 23 for the Gauchos, Ga Gaona. Casa Grande defense. Played pretty well, including against American Canyon. Only allowed a couple big plays in that one that really crippled them. And they played well last year, too, when Petaluma was heavily favored and limited an electric Trojan offense last year to only 20 points. And around Afreitas, looking for Rum. Breaks the tackle, but good job by Casa limiting the space for Freitas. He's, he's going to be the best player out on this football field this afternoon. But if they key in on him and don't allow him to get open space, that's the one way to stop them. Only one team all year has stopped them. It was Vintage, which is the best team I think either team has faced. But Freitas only had nine yards in that one. It is not enough for the first. It's going to be third and short. Third and two from the three. The first down is at the one. Hartman under center. Prieto is dotting the eye. Hartman takes it himself, and I'm not sure he got there. No traction on the line. And I, it's going to be decision time. Hartman is not the most physical runner. He's a taller player. That's why you might maybe question running through the tackles. Prieto's been so good, including his best game of the year last week against Napa when he went for over 100 yards, including a 60-yard touchdown to open up the game, 143 yards rushing for Colton Prieto last game. Freitas, 159 yards. And it was an electric day offensively for the Trones against Napa, 454 yards overall. Timeout out on the field. So we throw it back on me. Oh, well, it'll be back on me in just a minute. How many viewers we got tuning in? 18, I wanna, I wanna thank everyone. We're up to 20. I want to thank everyone tuning in. And we were hoping maybe to set a Trojan Live record for most viewers. If you're just joining us, I'm Griffin Upstein here, live from the 2018 Egg Bowl. Petaluma threatening to score here, but a huge fourth down coming up. Jack Hartman is in at quarterback and goes for a 40-yard run to start the game. Let's head back out onto the field. And I presume that they go for it. Daxton Hagia is an excellent kicker. Actually, my bad, they have remeasured it and they give them a first down. So first and goal from the one, Hartman didn't get a lot, but a late surge just enough. Hartman takes it to the left, he stood up. But he's in, touchdown Trojans. It was a hard fought inch, but that was all he needed. Hartman goes 50 yards down the field into the red zone. And a couple hard fought yards and Petaluma strikes first. It's 6 0 Trojans. 8.42 remaining in the first. Daxton Hogya on for the extra point. And exactly how you want to start this huge game if you're Petaluma. It is booted through by Hogya. 7 0. Hogya. 18 for 19 on PATs this year. He's only missed one extra point. He's been terrific kicking the ball and an excellent start for Petaluma. I appreciate all the love on the, the group chat, by the way.
So 7 nothing, excellent start for Bedlam. They forced the turnover, Freitas with the interception, and it could be a key this afternoon on the other for the side of the ball, Petaluma on offense, Casa on defense. Can they stop Garrett Freitas? He's so electric, and Casa's given up a lot of big plays this year. This is a, a big play offense for Petaluma. It wasn't last year. They still grind the ball up, but Garrett Freitas has gone for has rushed for 100 yards in over five games this year, and a lot of that is big plays. Turned up a lot of over 50-yard plays on the ground, especially with Freitas costing not great speed. If Freitas can really install his will out here on this field tonight, he could be a long afternoon for the Casa Grande defense. Back on field. Hoggy will kick it away again. Seven-nothing lead. Second snap of the game for Costa on offense for Sarge just threw it up for grabs and Freitas intercepted it. But certainly Hartman didn't look nervous. This is a squibber. It's dangerous if the hands aren't good, but the hands were strong. Herrera, Matt Herrera, makes the nice play. It'll be good field position to start for Costa Grande. Three and six overall are the Gauchos. They had a very poor start to their season, just like they have done seemingly for the last five years. 0-4 in non-conference. A tough schedule nonetheless. They fell to Windsor 30-22. Lost to a Montgomery team that Petaluma beat 35-7. Lost to San Marin 28-14 and then fell to Maria Carrillo 41-7. A really season turning around victory. They beat Justin Siena 36-35 to open DDAL. Screen pass and Petaluma reads it well. Looking for Gramajo out wide. Another senior on a Two very experienced teams, Casa Grande with 20 to 16 seniors, Trojans with 24, and certainly Casa Grande lost Kenneth Fitzgerald from last year, but they, they've improved a lot over the course of the year. They had a really rough start to the year. Victories against Justin Siena, Napa, Sonoma. And they're looking for their fourth victory of the year and a victory that would put them into the NCS playoffs. For Sarge can run and he'll give it a go with his legs here. Spins out of a couple tackles and picks up about six to make it a third and reasonable. But good job by the Trojans flying to the ball. Nick Ayers in on the tackle. He's the star linebacker for Petaluma. Leads the team in tackles with 36. Also three sacks and four tackles for a loss. Leads the team in sacks as well. Who's second team all SCL and will probably be first team all VDAL at the linebacking position for Petaluma. Him and Pomi, an excellent linebacking corps. For Sarge goes hard count, turns don't jump. Third and about five. Herrera is the running back for the Gauchos. They're pretty one dimensional. They're going to look through the air. Herrera diving forward. He is not going to get there, though. A couple yards short. As the clock strikes seven here from Steve Ellison Field. He just, so first down was gone by Borsage on the, the run, so it is now second down. My bad. Herrera again, and nowhere to go. Excellent job by the Trojan defense. Mariana Harmamillo in on the tackle for a much improved defensive line. Line was a struggle early in the year for Petaluma, but Daniel DeCarly, Harmamillo, Nick Sambita, Cole Coaches, and Kenny Alexander have all been a big part of a defensive line that has really limited running backs throughout the year. Eddie Birdsong, who ran over the Casa defense last week, was really limited when Petaluma faced American Canyon. This time to Gramajo, spinning his way forward, and just enough, it looks like, for the first down. If you hear music and cheers behind me, the Casa Grande student section right to my left here on Brazil's patio, and they're standing up and trying to make noise and cheer on their gauchos. He did not get the first. It's fourth down. Fourth and about half an inch. So a huge play here. Gauchos go quick, snap, power set, give to Herrera, and he bounces over some Trojan defenders, and down to the 30, Johnny Johnson in on the tackle. But an excellent job by Josh Garcia, my bad, not 
Herrera, the senior wide receiver. Gramajo, who will also see carries along with Herrera for the Gauchos, picks up four in yards through the air per game. It's cost 139 yards on the ground, but 36 points up on Justin Siena. 40 on Sonoma, 41 on Napa, and 14 against American Canyon last week. It's a hot offense, breaking tackles, and all the way down to the 10 is Herrera. And if Acosta can establish his running game, that is going to be huge for their offense. Down to the 10. Trojan student section filled up in their purple. Beyond the sign, this is Weebly Purple trying to make some noise, but this Casa offensive line is bullying its way past the Trojan defenders right now. Nice play there. And spinning upside down with Alex Johnson, the senior 5'11, 200 pound running back. Trojan defense, we mentioned it, played spectacularly in the first half against Napa last week, shut down a good Grizzlies offense, but was not good in the second half at all. Carry to Gramajo this time, and only has a few, so this is going to bring up a third and goal from about the five. Defense gave up 373 yards, the Petaluma defense. Last week, and a big third down here. Petaluma 51 of 73 getting off the field on third down. Third and goal from the five. Another power set for the Gauchos. Hard count, and Borsarge got them to jump, I think. He did. Excellent job of the senior quarterback, Jane Borsarge, going with the hard count. And it worked. So that totally changes the game plan, moves the ball from the seven to the two. Much easier and puts the Gauchos in four down territory looking to equal up this, equalize up this game. Nowhere to go, stacked up. That was Herrera. And the Petaluma defense all over it. It was nice play by Connor Pedersen, the secondary captain, coming out of his position to make the tackle. Second on the team in tackles at 39. And this is a fourth down and goal from the two. Huge play. Again, that's the power set. Three running backs. Now they split out to the right. Terrera in the backfield. They'll get it. Does he get there? It's awfully close. They'll have to take a closer look. The refs are running right at about the goal line. No signal. He might be short. He is! The Trojans stop Casa at the one inch line. Herrera does not get in. And we saw on the other side, Petaluma able to just narrowly punch it in. Casa Grande unable to punch it in. And the Trojan defense comes through. Petaluma will start at, in the shadow of their own goalpost at the one. So you have to be careful and expect Costa to bring some pressure. We'll see how Hartman handles it. He looked very calm and confident on his first drive. And he's, he's played a lot of football with the Petaluma Panthers over the years. But certainly nothing like the Egg Bowl. Quick give up the middle, and Prieto picks up a few. Colton Prieto has become an excellent factor for Petaluma. 509 yards on the ground, 80 carries, and averaging 63 yards per game, including a big game against Napa. He really broke out against El Molino in the homecoming game. 114 yards on the ground for the senior running back. But he's become the, the feature power back and has allowed a, a change of pace from Garrett Freitas for Petaluma. Second and eight. No one in the backfield. It was Prieto who came over from the right. And he stood up, but after a game of about four, and it's going to be a third and short conservative play calling by head coach Rick Chris, not 
wanting to see any mistakes in a dangerous position on the field. For Trojans that have turned the ball over a lot, we mentioned that one of the keys to this one, eight interceptions, all by Cole Powers, 10 fumbles by the Petaluma offense, including Freitas, who fumbled twice against Napa and four times this year. That's been a little bit of a bug. I haven't seen a lot of Freitas yet. He does not have a carry. He split out to the right. It's the give to Pedersen. He finds a hole. It'll be enough for the first down, driving his legs down to the 19. He rolls over a tackle all the way to the 20. Excellent run by Connor Pedersen. And you're seeing the depth of the Trojan offense that they've they really built up, uh, up over the course of the year. Patterson had a nice game against Napa. He has 195 rushing yards over the course of the year. Similar to Freitas, very speedy, but a little bit shorter, a little less elusive, and the defense is not looking for number 13 like they are for number 5. Patterson, nine, 79 yards on the ground against Napa last week. Give to Prieto. He's tripped up at the line for a few yards. Give credit to this Casa line. They're battling hard, but it is so hard to get off the field against this deep Petaluma offense. Line for Casa Grande led by Daniel Chavez and Matthew Murphy, the two seniors. They've improved over the course of the year. We're under a minute to go. 7 0. I'm actually, they're trying, the, the Casa student section is trying to instigate me and yell at me, but it's not really working right now. Hartman. Give to Freitas on the sweep. Freitas has got room down the sideline. It's a foot race. Freitas in the Casa territory down to the 45. First give to Freitas all afternoon. And it works out well as the Trojans in their black offense, black jerseys are cruising right now. Freitas for 30 yards on the end around. And when you work it up the middle, you get those hard two, three yards. Those seams will open up for Freitas and Pedersen out wide. Should be the final play of this first quarter. Hartman takes it himself, and he's eight up by the Casa Grande defense. Does a good job there on the read. Quinton Lopez, the junior strong safety. And on the tackle, we've reached the end of one of play here. It was a difference at the goal line. Petaluma punched in at their goal line after their opening drive. Casa Grande stopped at the one, and now the Trojans driving as we reach the end of one. It's Petaluma seven, Casa Grande zero. Oh, well, you're gonna see a quick advertisement before you see me, but an excellent start so far here. Was that it? Hello, excellent start for Petaluma here in this first quarter. We talked about poise, about dealing with the moment and just going out and playing football. So far, the Trojans absolutely play in their style of game. They are running the ball up the middle. They're battling, bruising football, and then giving it to Freitas out wide for big gains. They're causing turnovers on the defense, something they've done all year long, and making big plays at the goal line as well. This is Petaluma style of football for the Trojans. And right now, they have played to their game plan. For Costa Grande, they want to air out the ball, look down the field, but they also need to slow down those runs up the middle and make the Trojan offense reliant on Freitas. When Petaluma's offense becomes one-dimensional, that's where there's an issue. And Jack Hartman has not thrown a pass yet because right now the Petaluma rushing attack is working to a T. Back on the field. Back on the field. It's a packed stadium. For this one, I thought at some point I would get something thrown at me by the Costa student section, and they are now throwing some footballs at me. They're missing, though. But I got a lot of green footballs here on Brazil's patio. Hopefully not too many more. Hartman rolls out to his right, and he's got Prieto out in the flat, breaking some tackles down the sideline to the 35. Just short of the first down. They're going to mark him out at the 37. That one almost got me. I hope they don't give the cost of student section too many flying objects because I might not make it through the entire game. 11.53 left to go here in the second quarter. And third and short. This Petaluma offensive line has done an excellent job 
beating back the team. And now, nice job by Athletic Director Rick O'Brien instructing the student section not to throw things at me. Meanwhile, Prieto up the middle. He's got a big gain down to the 31. Or 21. 15 yards for Prieto. This offensive line has already worked hard in this first quarter to find some seams. And Prieto who works so hard. He's not, not the, the prettiest player. He doesn't, he doesn't have huge gains, but he is so key to just beating down a defense. Diamond form for the pedal ball offense. Give to Prieto again. He dives forward for a couple more. It's 2018 edition of the Egg Bowl, Casa Grande Petaluma. And the rivalry certainly runs deep. If you live in Petaluma, you would certainly know, but if you don't, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what what sport it is, or as Orcus Curry writer likes to say in Tiddlywinks, if Petaluma and Casa played, it would be a big deal. But varsity football is the biggest deal, and that makes this game so much more intense, and the community event for the weekend. Second and eight is Prieto again. And only a few more yards. It's going to make it a third and about five. 10.47 left in the second. The Trojans, absolutely, again, they have a terrific field goal kicker in Daxon Augia, including kicking the game winner against Justin Siena in a, really the best game of the year for Petaluma football. A thrilling 31-28 to victory on the road at Justin Siena. Nowhere to go this time for the senior running back. He's pushed backwards. And now decision time for head coach Rick Christie. He might have even lost one. It'll be about fourth and three. Hagia is certainly good from this range. It would be only about 33 yards. He's kicked two 38 yards. He's perfect on field goals, five for five. Head coach Rick Christ is going to talk about it as they take a timeout, second timeout for Petaluma. They have one remaining, Costa Grande, with all three remaining. Uh, I'm getting suggestions to throw, to throw things back at the Casa student section. Retaliation is vital to not, not retaliating. And as we throw it back on me, I'm going to throw it back on me. It's vital not to retaliate. And so far, besides the Casa student section throwing objects at me, they've done a terrific job both sides in keeping their cool. It was a thrilling JV game as well, and we saw both sides stay cool in that one. Casa Grande winning 21 to seven in a really close and good JV game. Back on the field. So it looks like the big linemen are out for Petaluma and they're gonna go for it on fourth down. Freitas is to the left department. Pedersen is the feature back, and Prieto is to the right. Freitas, uh, Freitas moved up. Don't miscommunication. Freitas started going before the ball was snapped. False start will move Petaluma five yards back. And I think you have to kick a field goal now. First flag we've seen all game on either side. And a critical mistake by the senior running back, Freitas, for normally clean. What did Mr. Aha say? Oh, guess what, you know, not, not Gandhi, I just tried to make sure there's peace between Casa and Petaluma. They are going to go for it. Hartman fakes, rolls out to the right, he's looking in the end zone, touchdown, and was he out of bounds? He's out of bounds. Thought he might have gotten a foot down, but he just could not scrape into the purple end zone. Looking for Nick Ayers. And Hartman might have just missed that one. He threw it a little to the right. And the Trojans turn it over on downs. Jack Hartman. Only his third pass attempt of the game. He was two for two. And it was a tough throw rolling out to his right. He's similar to Powers, mobile naturally can throw on the run, but he just missed it to Nick Ayers, the senior tight end. 
So Casa offense takes over, and for Sarge on the QB keeper takes to the right, and nowhere to go. Hartman in on the tackle, so safety, the only sophomore that gets any playing time on this team, but he is talented, and we talked about that, he, that we would be worried about, <laughs> we would be worried about Jack Hartman in keeping his poise and being able to deal with the moment, but he has played defense all year long at the safety position, including in some big moments. So that absolutely has to help him. For Sarge running to his right, and just overthrew it, he had a wide open receiver in Zach Register. Dominic McHale, excuse me, who we haven't seen yet, he leads Casa Grande in receiving yards and also in catches. And for Sarge put his hands on his head, he just overthrew it, overthrew it. McHale couldn't hold on. But for Sarge is also mobile, he can move around in the pocket. And we've seen mobile quarterbacks give Petaluma defense struggle, especially against Justin Siena, when they could not get to the quarterback. Justin Siena stayed in that game because of that. There is McHale, and there's a first down. Nice comeback route right at the six. And Casa will have a first down, 9-16 and counting remaining in the second quarter. 7-0, Petaluma leading. And that's a tense, low-scoring affair. Both these teams have strong offenses, just as they did last year, but I think a rivalry game like this, it just brings out a lot more tension, and you're afraid to go big, and it means it's gonna be lower scoring and close throughout. It's often what rivalry games are. Screen pass. Excellent job by the pedal of defense. Nowhere to go. Kandau out there helping Pedersen. Both in on the tackle. Freitas a little bit slow to get up. We mentioned it earlier that wasn't playing defense previously because they were worried about his ankle and just wanted to keep him out there for offense. But he is too vital a defensive player not to have him out on the field for the Egg Bowl. 30 viewers tuning in. I want to thank everyone tuned in live here to Ellison Field. It's terrific. Pressure on Borsage drops it off to Herrera. Nowhere to go again. Trojan tackling has been excellent so far this game. A lot of screens by Casa Grande, one of the favorite parts of their spread it out offense. And if you can't make tackles, it can be a nightmare to defend this Casa Grande offense. But so far, excellent job by this Petaluma defense. Johnny Johnson, the junior, who's become a bigger part of the secondary, along with Freitas on the tackle. Third and four from the 46 of Casa. Herrera stopped initially surges forward, but I do not think that's going to be enough. It's going to be fourth and short. Fourth and about a yard and a half. And the punt squad is coming on out for Casa Grande. Next Zambita in on the tackle for the Trojans, and they will force the punt from Casa on the Petaluma offense, which has only had two drives in this slow-moving game, but they have looked very good. No, they're going to go for it. It looked like they had Send out the punt team. Instead, they go for it on fourth, and they get it. So a big fourth down conversion for the Gauchos. We saw a change in personnel, and I just assumed the change in personnel would be the punt team, but it was a change in personnel instead, and the biggest guys on the team. And the offensive line, single-handedly, gets us a crack of daylight for Herrera. And a first down for the Gaucho offense, right to midfield. Been a quiet day for Borsarge. He has no completions downfield. End around. It's a double end around. And the Petaluma defense reads it excellently. How about Connor Patterson? Spectacular tackle in the backfield. The trickery by Casa Grande. Ian McKissick, who's one of the most dangerous players on the field. He is the Garrett Freitas to the Casa Grande offense. He's an electric player in the open field. But Patterson with an excellent job. Sure, hands it secondary captain. Also on the varsity wrestling team, great leader for Petaluma as well. Good protection for Borsarge this time. Comeback route. And it was complete. You have to go around. So 6.22 left in the second on the Pass completion to Kirsten Kerrigan on the comeback route. 
Brings up a third and three, a pickup of seven. So another big third down as the clock goes down to six minutes remaining in the first half. Ferreira is stonewalled. Going backwards. And that whole defensive line for the Trojans, along with Ayers and Pomey at the linebacker position. Pushing them backwards. Harmon Mio was the first one to him again. Excellent job by the senior defensive lineman, Harmon Mio, who was on JD last year. He's become one of the most key players to this varsity team. He's coming off limping, so that's not a good sign for Petalum, who's finally really gotten healthy. Logan Wager is the only player out with a concussion. Obviously, Cole Powers is we have not seen yet. He's sick. Back on me, please. But so far, oh, I got it. So we've seen four, I got it. We've seen for Petaluma that the struggles at points with the lack of health, and that's been a big part. They've gotten healthier as the season on, has gone on, and they finally won back-to-back -back games for the first time. How did it go? To, oh, they, they went back, they won back-to-back -back games for the first time all season, defeating Napa last week after a victory against Sonoma Valley, and after the, their second BBL loss to Benji, it really felt like they had a chance to win all three of their final games as the season came to a close against Sonoma, who they, they gritted out at a grit, gritty victory against a gritty Dragons team, should beat Napa, who was winless, they did, and now the big rivalry game against Cox Grande. All three teams are beatable, and if they can beat all three teams back on field, please, they can beat all three teams, it absolutely merits a, a home field game, potentially in NCS. Top eight teams make home field get a home field game in NCS. Trones currently projected as a 10 seed, but it's pretty tight there between about 8 and 10. Screen passes, batted down! Connor Pedersen gets his mitts up and knocks it down. What a game so far for Pedersen. He had the big tackle for loss a couple plays ago, and he bats that pass down, and the Gauchos turn the ball over. So the second time, Cross has turned the ball over. They haven't punted yet. They've gone for it three times on fourth down, but only good once. And if Patterson does not come on in and bat that ball down, McKay, er, Herrera was out in the flat, and he had plenty of space for the first down and likely lots more. So the Trojan offense takes over with 541 left in the second. And an opportunity here both to score and not give cost of the ball back in the locker room. Trojans will also get the ball out of the locker room in the second half. Cole Powers has entered the game. So Jack Hartman has played well, but he did miss that one pass. Tronin's call timeout with Powers out for his first snap. But interesting to see Rick Christ decide to go with Cole Powers considering, considering how good Jack Hartman has played in his first three possessions. The Pelham offense has really moved the ball at will down the field, and certainly a great rushing attack has helped as well, but Hartman has looked cool and composed the sophomore quarterback. Certainly Powers is the most experienced player, and a player who's played with first team all year, and has been brilliant at times, but I was watching him in warm-ups, and he did not look comfortable or agile at all. He was kind of limping around on the field, and there's nothing wrong physically with him. It's just a sickness, but he's pretty sick. He just got sick on Wednesday. And it was kind of out of the blue that he made the decision yesterday to start Jack Hartman at quarterback for this game. And obviously Casa Grande didn't know this either, so they, they have to be surprised to see a different quarterback in there, even though I would say Hartman has a very similar game plan and in, in way that the Trojans run their offense around him as they do around Powers, which makes it easier for everyone on the Petaluma side as well. So Powers' first play is just a handoff off the middle. And a couple yards. The Trojans will be a key to run down the clock here and not give Casa another chance. Three yards on the carry for Prieto. He's had another busy day. 5'9", 145 pound senior, also on the wrestling team. Physical player. The Shrone's a physical team as well. As Prieto dives it forward. I think they were disappointed that they were blown out by the BBAL champions Vintage who defeated Napa last night to close out their undefeated Vine Valley Athletic League title, but Trojans were really run out of this house by Vintage. 50-7 It was the first loss at Steve Ellison Field in over two years for 
Petaluma and Vintage just totally outmatched them and out physical them. And since then, Coach Chris has talked a lot about getting more physical, especially at the line, because Vintage just looked a lot better there. Prieto getting physical as he goes up the middle for a first down. Down to the 38. And the Trojans move the sticks. It's ugly grinding out football once again. And the Trojans have a couple ugly victories this year, 21 to 7 against Montgomery in their season opener, and then they did it again against Terra Linda in their home opener two weeks later. Ball is on the ground, and Powers dives back on it. Read option, and they give to Prieto, and miscommunication there if he was going to, Powers has to decide whether he wants to take it out of the belly of Prieto based on how the defense is, is playing and run it himself, or give it to Prieto if he likes what the defense is seeing. And whatever the case there, he just made the decision too late. And that's the risk, ball on the ground. One reason that we've seen a lot of fumbles this year by the Petaluma offense. It's hard to run the triple option and the read option, something that Petaluma does both of. Another power set, only one receiver split out to the right. And around to Freitas. Only time he got the ball before, he went for 40 yards. A little kind of tunnel route to the right. Nice job by Ayers blocking the tight end, who does a lot of that. That's a big part of playing tight end uh, in this pedal of offense. And Freitas down to the 29 right in front of me on Victor Brazil's patio. We thought we were going to be down on the track for this game, but a pleasure to be back here on Mr. Brazil's patio at least one, at least, well, at least for today, possibly for next week if the Trojans are at home for NCS. ASB was going to be using Mr. Brazil's patio, but turned out that was not the case, and we are back on this terrific spot. It could be the final football live stream that Trojan Line will be doing this year. We have whistles on this third and short. And it's on Petaluma. Delay of game. And that's not just a trying to run down the clock here with 3.02 left, but you got to manage the clock better. And it was a third and two, which has felt pretty easy for the Petaluma rushing attack that just ran it down the throat of the Gauchos. But now a third and seven, and we'll see if Powers takes to the air. He can also run with his legs. Cole Powers, 60 rushes, 214 yards, and eight touchdowns on the season. He's especially good at the goal line. Prieto is the running back. Powers fakes, rolls out, and an excellent job to Howard for the first down. That is how you draw it up. Howard the comeback. And Powers looked A-OK -okay on that, comfortable on his feet, and a pretty ball to Hubbard for the first down. Jacob Hubbard, the leading wide receivers in receiving. That was his seventh catch of the season. He has 133 yards coming into today. And part of the, the, the big play offense that we talked about for Petaluma is the wide receivers and Pedersen and Hubbard and Hagia. Hubbard averaging 22 yards per catch. That was a, a rare short passing play. You don't see those a lot by this Petaluma offense. And Hagia, who's had a couple big games, including a touchdown against Napa last week. 75 receiving yards, 15 per catch. Freitas. A few more yards and out to the 20. And this has been good clock management. It's, there's been some questionable clock management at times by head coach Rick Chris and the Petaluma coordinators, but this has been exactly how you want to run it. They're running the clock down, down to 220. Plenty of time right now to run their offense. But if they can punch it in with under a minute and give really no chance for Kase, you're going to be going to the locker room up 14-0 and get the ball back to start the, the second half. Prieto gets the fake, and it's Powers taking it himself. Out to the 15, the speaker. In front of the Casa Grande student section is going, but they've had little to cheer about this game. It's not a seat to be had in the, the nice concrete seats that were built with this refurbishing of Ellison Field are also in use as well. And that little patio area has a lot of food, businesses, community members out there. It's a great scene. Third and short. Prieto is awfully close to the marker. It's going to be enough for another first down. So this Petaluma offense just sl slowly marching down the field. 
Warrior5230 tuning on into the chat. Keep those live comments, comments going, and we'll certainly try to be monitoring them throughout the game. You can also check out all of our other football videos and live streams on our YouTube channel. Prieto breaking a tackle, diving towards the end zone. He's in, touchdown Trojans. A classic grinded out drive for Petaluma. They marched their way downfield, a six minute drive. They started back at the 40 after stopping Casa on fourth down. Only had a couple passes and a couple conversions on third down. Two third down conversions makes it 13 to nothing. And Hagia out for the extra point to solidify. The Trojans lead on this one as the band plays fight on. Hagia looking good on the PATs as he boots it through. It's 14 to nothing. We've got a minute seven remaining here in this first half. And in this 2018 version of the Egg Bowl, it's all Petaluma so far. They lead 14 to nothing. Back on me, please. Stay tuned as well for halftime festivities. We'll have the band. We will have both cheerleaders performances as well. Always fun to see. Casa Band will put on a little bit of a field show. Both cheerleaders have been working all year. They do an excellent job as well. So they'll add to the fun festivities that are going on at this great community event. Beautiful weather, beautiful day, and so far a beautiful start for Petaluma on both sides of the ball. The defense has been stingy. It's made Jane more stars work. And it's been hard going, and this offense has been classic Petaluma offense over the last couple of years. Grinded out football. I know we have a couple of alums watching. We saw it a lot last year with the deep corps of running backs. Jacob Ralston, Justin Turner, Freitas obviously a part of it last year back on field. Last year, in the, those grinded out running backs, there was so much depth rushing. And it was, early in the year, it was a struggle. There were not a lot of other options besides Freitas. But we have seen Pedersen get involved. Prieto has been used a lot. That has been big. Prieto is the first down the field to make the tackle. And an excellent kick by Haga. And better special teams coverage. Special teams have been excellent for the Trojans so far in this one. Costa will start at the 25. They have one minute left to run their offense. And that, with all three timeouts, that's certainly enough time to take a couple shots and hope to try to get some points on the board. They badly need something right now because all the momentum is on Petaluma's side. It's a Casa offense that's averaging over 300 yards per game and Borsage who's averaging over 128 yards through the air per game but he has been uncomfortable. Ayers comes in on the blitz. It's tipped and it falls incomplete. It was pinballing. It was like a volleyball match, it went off multiple Petaluma hands and Casa hands. Nick Ayers came untouched on the blitz and made Borsarge get rid of it early, throwing it all sorts of traffic. And Casa just has to be happy that that falls untouched. Finishing halves are important. And you don't want to make the hole even worse if you're the Gauchos. So second and 10, that stops the clock with the incompletion, 53 seconds remaining. Better protection this time, and Borsarge looking downfield. He's got a man, but he overthrew him. Freight is such a good cornerback, but Gianni Johnson has done well, but he's likely still susceptible to Junior a lot younger. So they were looking for Rashad Nixon, the 6'1", 174-pound wide receiver. But Borsarge has just been off today. He's not looked comfortable, and probably, probably the tension and nerves have been a part of it, but... Really, the Petaluma defense has been big as well. We're going to see a meeting of two flags as Petaluma and Casa Grande are both running their flags around the track. Jordan Zajon running her flag around. The Casa student is running the Gaucho flag around. The, the Trojan Buam. Jordan Zajon is going to run in front of the Casa student section. I am concerned for a safety wall. This is happening. It, it's still going on. And now they're trying to rip the flag. 
out of Zay Jordan Zajon's hand. She holds on. A couple water bottles thrown at her, but she looks like she's going to make it through without significant harm. My goodness. And the Casa Grande flag has been returned to the Casa Grande side as well. Corsage looking out wide. It is complete, but a nice tackle by Gianni Johnson. And a timeout, I assume, taken by Casa Grande. Though the first down will also move the sticks. Thirty-eight point one, and there was a timeout taken. They have all three timeouts, so there's no reason not to use them for Casa and head coach Dennis Brunk. You can't take it. Yes, they have now taken administration. It looks like uh, Casa Grande has taken both flags away from teams. And debatably, the flags are not conducive to a friendly environment. Though I promise you that there's just not going to be a friendly environment between these two fan bases. Casa and Petaluma do not like each other, and. You try to treat your treat both teams civilly, but there's only so much respect that's going to go around on both sides between these two arch rivals and two schools that do not like each other at all. There's no doubt about that. So time out here. Costa Grande is the ball at the 42-yard line. They have a good kicker. Hogya, a good kicker for Petaluma. And Ian McKissick is the senior kicker for Costa Grande. So he, if they can, he can have a shot. If Casa can move it about 15 more yards, and at least getting some points on the board would be helpful for the green and gold. Trojans looking for back-to-back -back Egg Bowl victories for the first time since 2008-2009 after their 2014 victory last year. For Sarge, rolling out to his left, decides to take off. Tiptoeing down the sideline, picks up a couple yards and steps out of bounds with 30.5 left to go. Smart play by the senior quarterback, Borsarge, who can also run 385 yards on the ground for Borsarge, averaging 42 rushing yards per game. But only really one good drive by Casa Grande, and they were stopped at the one-inch line by the Petaluma defense. They had a first and goal, too, from the eight and did not score. That is one of the key plays of this game, the Petaluma defense bending but not breaking. Or Sarge overthrew that one, looking for McKissick. Freitas, though, was all over the coverage. Already he's an interception, and he's done an excellent job in coverage. So a third and five, 25.3 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. The cheerleaders trying to pump up the Petaluma student section and get them loud. They got a nice array of balloons and flags behind them. Dropped for Sarge looking for Herrera out of the backfield, and Herrera just dropped it. That is a key drop. He would have had the first down, and a couple chances for Costa to take some shots in the end zone or get a little closer for a field goal. Instead, it's a fourth down, and they're definitely too far away for a field goal. Petaluma, who shut out Napa in the first half last week, has a chance to do it again. Student section is roaring on the Petaluma side. Fourth and about three. For Sarge with all day. And he's got the first down and more. Doesn't get out of bounds, but Casa Grande has a timeout with 13.6 seconds left. Carson Kerrigan, who's not one of the leading wide receivers for Casa, but he has been a factor. Freitas has shut down Ian McKissick. Probably the most dangerous wide receiver. Acosta does not use a timeout. Clock running. Down to 10 is where Sarge looks over the middle. It was almost intercepted. Oh, they're going to call targeting, are they? Or unnecessary roughness. Maybe. That would be for presumed to call Hartman, who had a spectacular interception against Tara Linda, came flying in, in. Flying on in. There was some contact. I don't think he led with the helmet, though. There's no official targeting in high school football, but it's pretty similar to college. You would just call it intentional roughness. We'll await the signal. Clock has stopped at 6.9. It's maybe a time enough to run one play into the end zone, and then you probably kick the field goal and take the points. Your head coach, Dennis Brunk, who's 
Only in his second year at Casa Grande, they have a surprising fire of Trent Herzog, who was so successful with the Gauchos, and really since they fired Herzog, it has gone downhill football-wise at Casa Grande. They've started years slow. They won a couple NBL titles in the early 2000s and also dominated this Egg Bowl. They lead 8-5 to five in the century, but they have struggled the last couple of years, especially early in the season, and gone better as the years going on. Referees are still having conversation. This is a hard game to ref, but they've done a good job. Not see too many flags. It's been pretty clean. Casa Grande, who may as well use their timeout, one remaining, will use it. So 6.9 remaining here in this first half, and our falling asleep, falling asleep camera has given you a couple more advertisements. Trojans leading 14 to nothing, but Casa Grande trying to get some points on the board. They have moved the football at times, very slowly, similar to Petaluma. They badly need some points for some momentum going into the locker room. So vital in a game that has so much emotion on both sides, as the Egg Bowl does, with so much dislike for your rival. But nonetheless, even if Petaluma goes into the locker room leading 14 to nothing, you have to keep on playing hard. Petaluma totally let their guard down against Napa last Friday, and Napa nearly made that game interesting. Even a Grizzlies team that's not that good, but the Trojans didn't play well in the second half. They need to keep their foot on the gas pedal and continue to treat this as a, another football game, as they have done so far. Back on field. Back on field. Oh, who's who's uh, commenting in our live chat, Jamie? Yeah, Belleville Real tuning in all the way from Germany. And it's about, I think it's about 2 a.m. now there. So a first down from the 14 for Costa. 6.9 is just enough for a quick pass into the end zone. Before Sarge is taking his time. Now over the middle, touchdown, Gauchos. A huge play to win this half. Costa Grande is right back in this football game. That was exactly how you draw it up. Dominic McHale, the crossing route over the middle. And the Costa Grande student section finally getting something to cheer about really for the first time today. With 2.5 seconds left in the first half. It's 14 to 7. McHale, who just caught the touchdown, now on for the extra point. Boots it through, and it's 14 to 7. We've got a one possession football game. It's the Egg Bowl. It's got to be close. There are not too many blowouts in the Egg Bowl over the years when you look at the long history of this game. 38th meeting between these two dating back to 1974. Petaluma High School has been around all the way since 1880. Do you know the year, Jamie? It's on my shirt, actually. Back in the 1880s, Petaluma High School was founded. Casa founded on the east side, much newer, founded back in... 1873 was when Petaluma High School was founded. Second oldest high school in all Sonoma County. And the rivalry game used to be against Santa Rosa High, but Casa Grande was started back in the mid, I think back in the 50s. And it started to develop their football program. And they started playing back in the 70s, and they have played every year until back in 2012 when they stopped playing after some incidences in the 2011 game. And also dominance from Casa, as we mentioned except for the 2008 and 2009 year, which were the last two years with head coach Steve Ellison at the helm for Petaluma. Casa really dominated the, the series in this 21st century, eight and five overall, but if you don't count last year and that 09 and 08 year, and it's pretty ugly eight and two towards Casa Grande, including five straight victories in the early 2000s for the Gauchos. They also won in 2010 and 2011, the last two times these were played. Only 2.5 seconds left. Garrett Freitas has returned a kick for a touchdown, but they do a smart job and kick it to Kenny Alexander, who does an excellent job and falls down. And that actually does not work out. 1.4 seconds does not work out for Casa Grande. We'll see if it's Hartman or Powers. Powers has probably the stronger arm than Hartman. So he can potentially launch one into the end zone. We have 37 viewers. Want to appreciate again everyone tuning in. And this is 100% a, a record for most Trojan live viewers on any live stream we have ever had before. 
So congratulations to everyone tuning in. You have helped create a Pedal My School Trojan Live record here in the 2018 Egg Bowl. And I encourage all of you to continue tuning into our live streams as we move into the winter sports season. We'll have wrestling, basketball, next, starting next month. Powers will toss to Freitas. There's no time left on the clock. And Casa able to run him down. That's a potential for a big play to get some points. But as both teams head to the locker room, and they both head to the same locker room, so you also look to see if there's any words exchanged. There are none, which is mostly good to see. The score, Pedal Trojans 14, Casa Grande, Gauchos 7. A huge touchdown scored on that last drive by Casa Grande. That was vital. That touchdown with 2.5 seconds left, really turning around this game. Petaluma had the momentum, and if Casa could not score there, I, I mean, that, that would be very deflating, especially after they were already stopped at their one before. Petaluma was also stopped in their red zone. They've only had possession four times, counting that last possession, so really only three possessions, and they've gone into the red zone all three times. So it's been a terrific offensive game for the Petaluma offense. It's gone to sleep again. So you have to be very happy if you're if you're on the Petaluma offense. Hartman's been good, Powers has been good, and they haven't actually used Freitas that much. They've relied a lot on Colton Prieto, and he's been a big factor in widening down this Gaucho defense. We've got a cheerleading performance, so let's get onto the field for that. We're gonna take a look at the Casa Grande cheerleaders, and then we'll be back with you after both cheerleader performances in just a minute. Grande varsity cheerleading team, they do a nice job, and now you're going to see the Petaluma High varsity cheerleading team, likely their final performance here at Steve Ellison Field. Many seniors on this team, so it'll be an emotional final performance, you know, for the team. And the student section and the band, give them a, a big cheer. And we'll get a chance to listen in in their performance as well.
what an excellent performance by the Pedal My School varsity cheer team. Apologies, they were a little far away. We have no one to currently run camera, but they do an excellent job, as did the Casa Grande High varsity cheer team as well. And we'll hear the Casa Grande band is going to be playing, and expect also the Petaluma band to play. Actually, they might start playing at the same time. Here is the Petaluma High School marching band, and the Costa Grande is playing at the same time, so who will be louder? <laughs> attack for Petaluma. It's been completely dominant. The Casa Grande defense has been totally unable to stop the Petaluma offense, who, who's rushed great all year long. They have uh, 
56 yards through the air. They've had a couple passes through the air to keep Casa honest, but 265 rushes yards per game for the pedal of the offense. They're doing the same thing today. Freitas has been used pretty sparingly, but when he has, he's been effective, and it's allowed Casa can't key in on Freitas because they don't use him every play. He's out there. Prieto's been good. Patterson's been used in a couple times. Hartman and Powers have both been effective. And now for Coach Chris, you could probably use Hartman or Powers who you want because both players are playing well. And it's just going to confuse the Casa Grande defense who's look lost more and likely cause them to struggle. So it's all roses, really, for the Petaluma offense. On the defensive side, Petaluma defensive side, Casa Grande offensive side, again, I would say Casa has to start to feel better, especially what they did on that last possession. Sweet Caroline rings out behind me from the Casa student section. Excellent job on that final possession. Casa using the clock. Looked like only a minute left. We didn't think they were going to be able to score. Petaluma had scored with a minute left. But Casa able to respond with that late touchdown. Borsarge looked a lot more comfortable and confident in that final drive. And he's a player that we mentioned a bunch of times. He's thrown for over 1,000 yards this year. Borsarge has a great arm, and he has a lot of wide receiver options. And it's a secondary that at times has been burned. I would expect him to look downfield a lot more and try to exploit this Trojan secondary, especially now that he has seemed to build some momentum and seems to be a little bit more comfortable out on the field. Petaluma defense has tried bringing a lot of pressure, and that worked for a lot of this. More of the first quarter force interception. They have some tackles for losses. They've done a lot of blitz packages, and it's at times confused Borsarge, but they're going to have to try to mix things up again because it finally looked like Borsarge was calming down. They were also developing a little bit in the rushing attack as well, but we don't expect Costa to do a lot rushing the ball. Matt Herrera has gotten a little bit going. Not a lot. He's it's not a big part of the Costa offense. They want to spread it out, and Petaluma's got to make sure to limit them behind me that Casa Grande Gauchos are making their way back out onto the field. We are a couple minutes away from the start of the second half, but Casa has to feel a lot better that they score that touchdown. And I, they were really outplayed in this first half by Petaluma, yet they're only down by seven points. And they're also losing the turnover battle and were also stopped at their own one yard line. So that helps. Petaluma, yeah, let's get back on the field if we can. Oh, can I see that? Okay. Petaluma um, offens offensively also has not punted, but they but they did have that intercept, that incompletion in the end zone. Nick Ayers was a couple inches away from getting a toe tap down, and instead it'd probably be 21 to seven. Hartman just missed the tight end Ayers. It's only really three possessions. Here come the pedal of the Trojans back out of the field. We're going to let you listen on in as the varsity football team makes his way out every home game through this kind of tunnel of love through the student section. It's a lot of fun to see the students running out there. A flag, and they found another flag. And a little bit, they get the Trojan head out and run through the banner. So both teams are out. We've got a couple more minutes for war buffs before we start this second half and see who will take the 2018 version of the Egg Bowl. Again, if you don't know it, why it's called the Egg Bowl, it was dubbed the Egg Bowl back in the 90s due to Petaluma's history with eggs. Petaluma was the egg chicken capital of the world and also the founder of the uh, chicken incubator. And even though it is not no longer the chicken capital of the world, certainly agriculture, chickens, cows, all the clover here in Petaluma, California, certainly vital. And the Egg Bowl is also a reference back to the history of Petaluma and the agricultural values and uh, features here in this small, or well, not that small of a town, but it is medium-sized town here in the California Bay Area. And uh, we want to put it back on me real quickly. Uh, 
Well, eight bladed irises. They're natural, attractive blurring, and they're also circular. I don't know where you can get them. We do, do, speaking of chickens, this is not a chicken, but this is a duck, and I was asked to bring out Theodore the duck, who's a big fan of the Petaluma Trojan football team. You can also follow him on Instagram, at Griffin's Duck. So, highly advise all of our viewers doing that. Hmm? I have excellent background knowledge. Thank you, Mr. Aha. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's a good one there. Back on field. Want to thank our, our other staff that are helping out with this game as well. Kaylee Smith was supposed to get us food. She has got us food. And Jamie Cantieri directing Gracie Riddell on camera for this one. And they're getting ready to start the second half. So I want to thank Mr. Victor Brazil for allowing us to use his patio, it's a terrific spot for football games. We've live streamed every home football game this year. And if, if you missed any of them, they're all on our YouTube channel. There's some good moments there. Tight victory against Terrell Lindell, blowout, fun victory against El Molino. The loss to Vintage, and the victory last Friday was senior night for the 24 seniors on the Federal Trojans against Napa. We also have been on the road and we will be wherever Trojans go next week, likely going to be on the road. That's that's my personal guess. They're currently ranked 10th in NCS Division Three. Right now, the third, the <laughs> right now the team in seventh is Akalani, who interestingly Petaluma played last year in NCS. Potentially a rematch against the Dons. So the Dons won last night, and a victory against Petaluma, they might move up and get into the 8th or ninth seed. If they get an A seed, they'll be back here on Saturday night here at Ellison Field for a home NCS games. And it's been three years since they've hosted an NCS game, so that would be something they'd love to have. Either way, it's going to be a good NCS game against a team that Petaluma can certainly beat. And we will look forward to that. It's a weaker Division Three than last year. They played Akalani's last year, but it's a really good Dawn's team. And the Trojans did a good job keeping up with Akalani's, but they fell in the N63-25. That score much lopsided, though, that it indicates. So NCS implications on the line for Petaluma, and we mentioned it at the start, for Casa Grande, a win, and they are probably almost certainly into NCS Division II playoffs. Likely it's a 15 or 16 seed. Could play Rancho Cotati, but... If they lose, their season likely ends here. Petaluma will get the ball first as they defer to start this one. We have 24 minutes, 24 more minutes of Egg Bowl football here, the 2018 version. Petaluma looking for back-to-back -back victories and also their first victory at Ellison Field since 2009. McKissick getting ready to kick it away. Low score intensive air grinded out on both sides. We expect more of the same, but always interested to see what adjustments we'll see from both sides. Two very experienced coaches in Dennis Brunk and head coach Rick Chris, and I think both teams have improved a lot over the course of the season. You have to give a lot of credit to both. Away we go in the second half, and it's a very short kick. Might have, McKissick might have miskicked that. Max Shattuck feels it well at the 40. Always dangerous if that bounces off your hands. Barely went 10 yards. And Pedalum is going to get a good field position. Oh, it was a false start. And they're going to attack on, I believe, by... No, they're going to re-kick it. So, false start, that kick never happened. They'll re-kick it, which actually favors Casa. They'll get an opportunity to boot it deep again. The Gauchos 3-6 and six overall, but 3-2. and two. In the VBAL, Petaluma also three and two in the VBAL. The winner will finish third alone in VBAL. It's a very turned out being a neat Vine Valley League. Vintage will finish undefeated, six and zero. American Canyon finishes five and one after they beat Justin Siena last night. The winner here will finish four and two in third. The loser will be three and three. Sonoma Valley finishes two and four in fifth. Justin Siena one and six, and Napa finishes winless. 0-6, oh, so and it's Sonoma 1-5. So we'll try again here on the kickoff. Five yards back now with a 40. It causes avoided kicking into Freitas. He's a very dangerous kick return. He has 302 kick return yards on 13 returns, averaging 23.2 yards per return. 
Take two, it bounces off Pomi's arms, and it was a struggle for Petaluma to get on it. Pomi eventually got back on it. And Petaluma will start at the 45. So will we see Hartman, or will we see Powers out to start? Powers playing only the last possession, which ended in a Trojan touchdown. Hartman was out there for the first two. Powers did play that one snap to end the first half, and it, it might just depend how, on how he's feeling right now. He's been sick. They named Hartman the starter on the team yesterday at practice, and Hartman was at practice taking all the first team snaps. Powers hasn't practiced since Tuesday. It is Powers, and he gives to Prieto for a couple yards to start the second half, and it's going to be a second at about eight. Shreds will once again go for the grind it out. They have three long drives. They've all been over five minutes. Freitas really been at the center of it. They've used Freitas a lot less than you'd think. Garrett Freitas, who has topped 1,000 yards today, he did on that 40-yard scamper he had in the first quarter. He had 971 yards coming into today, and averaging 121 yards per game, but he's nowhere near that. They just haven't used him as Prieto breaks the tackle, heading down the right sideline. He's got room until he's pushed out of bounds at the 30. And a 30-yard or 20-yard run for Prieto. Another terrific game for the senior running back. We also have some halftime stats for you. And it's certainly been Prieto that has been grinding at 82 yards on 13 rushes. Prieto has 71 yards on six rushes. And Hartman, obviously, with that big rush, that's most of what he has, but he has 36 rushing yards. Statistically, Petaluma pretty dominant in that first half as Powers takes it himself and maybe gets a yard or two. Second and about nine. Petaluma, 206 yards on the ground on 27 rushes. Costs only 69 yards on the ground. And you look at the, the average yards per rush, that's a big story. Petaluma gashing costs a 7.6 average yards per rush, costs only 3.8 yards per rush. Overall, 226 yards for Petaluma, 169 for Costa Grande. Passing Petaluma only two for three for 20 yards. They have been pretty one dimensional, but it's been fine. The ball is out on the toss. And recovered by Pedersen. Powers tossing to Pedersen. Those tosses are always scary if you're the Petaluma offense. A poor toss or just a drop can result in disaster. And Pedersen bobbled it. It fell to the ground and able to pick it up. Only one turnover on that second play of the game, the cost of running interception. But how about Petaluma on third downs? They're six of eight on third downs, and Casa is only one for seven. They've gone for five times on fourth down, though. They're three for five on fourth downs. Diamond formation. After that loss, so it's second and long. Prieto out in the flats, going to get that, a lot of that yardage back. Nice rolling out play by Powers. He, he, his arm looks fine. And he's been directing this pedal in the offense comfortably since he's come in. And as much as Hartman looked good, they'll certainly be excited to use him next year. But right now, you got to go with your senior quarterback in the Egg Bowl. He did not. He did play in the Egg Bowl last year in the 2014 victory for Pedalman. Was pretty much rotating time with Justin Wolbert by that point in the season. Powers and Wolbert got equal playing time. So third down and a couple. Kept to Prieto, and that should be enough for the first down. Relied on Prieto, and they've had a lot of third downs, but they're comfortable in converting them. So the Trojans convert as they move deeper into the Casa red zone, and it's going to be first and 10 from, I'm not at a good angle here. First and 10 from the 12 for Petaluma. Jaden Borsarge, 8 of 16 for 100 yards as he started to get going late in that second half. Again, it's Prieto up the middle, and he has a couple. Carson Kerrigan was the, he was the, the big play 
And a big target for Borsard. Three catches, 42 yards for Kerrigan. And Herrera on the ground did not do a lot. Seven rushes for 26 yards. Second and eight to the two-yard pickup as the Trojans move into the 10. One split out to the right, one to the left, and it's Freitas in the backfield. He hasn't gotten a carry yet. Costa jumped. Offsides on the gauchos, and the Trojans will get a three, five yards. That's a big help just to run down the throat of Costa Grande like they did on their first touchdown. That's just been another classic pedal in the drive out of the locker room here. They have run their offense effectively. Alec Johnson leads the Casa Grande defense with six solo tackles, five assisted. Pony, the senior linebacker, has done a good job. Three tackles and two more assisted. Freitas picks up a few. Third and short. Third and one, they're going to call it at the three. So a first down at the two. And it's Derek Pony for the first time as the feature power back. He was used the first couple games there. Head coach Rick Christ is shouting at Freitas to go one way. Powers is telling him to go the other way. So Freitas now splits out wide. Freitas can catch the ball, but instead it's the late handoff to Pedersen diving forward. And he did not get the first. I don't believe. No, he did. Just enough for the first down for Batterson. Awfully close. We've got Sophia Hanasi, Chase Woods tuning in. Appreciate all the comments. All 36 viewers. So it's going to be first to goal for Petaluma from the one as they look to retake their two-possession lead after Costa got that big touchdown at the end of the first half to make this a one-possession game. And before that, we have a timeout, Petaluma. Back. Wait. Not yet. Now. Yes. Well, if you're just joining us for the second half here, we are live here at the Varsity Football Egg Bowl here in Petaluma. And it is a 14-7 lead for the Petaluma Trojans over their arch rival, crosstown rival, Casa Grande. Tons of fans, students, community members from both sides. It's been a great atmosphere. The cheerleaders have been making noise. The bands have. The food has been cooking. And as we get into the late evening here in Petaluma, it's been a beautiful day, perfect for football, about 70 degrees, a light breeze. The sun shining, it's really been terrific. And now Petaluma looking to go up back two possessions, another long drive. It's been over five minutes for this drive, and the Tronins have just played gutsy, old-style football. It's not pretty, but it is working against the Gauchos. Back on field. And they have three downs here to punch it in from the two. It's more a question of win than if they give to Pony. He's in! Touchdown Trojans! So Petaluma responds after Costa scores the touchdown at the end of the first half and they reinstall their stamp and control of this 2018 Egg Bowl. An impressive drive by Petaluma in the opening possession and once again it was Prieto, Freitas, a couple throws by Powers slowly moving their way down the field, and they punch it in once again, 20 to seven. Boots it through, does hog it, he's perfect on PAT, he's three for three, and the band plays fight on once again. The banner out beside, behind the field goal, proudly proclaiming Petaluma Trojans, and the student section proudly cheering on right now, as this Trojan offense has played brilliant this afternoon, 321.3 yards per game coming into this year, averaging 27 points per game. And this has been classic Trojan offense against a good, very good Costa Grande defense. So we'll see the Costa Grande offense for the first time in this second half. And they're going to need to respond. And right, right now it feels like they need a turnover or a spark 
I guess Pebble has taken the momentum right back from Casa Grande after that late touchdown. And one thing that head coach Dennis Brunk of Casa said before the game is the key would be to keep Petaluma's offense off the field, and they have done the opposite of that. It is been ball control, long drives, long possessions, and the wearing down of the Casa Grande defense. And I think exactly what head coach Dennis Brunk feared for, feared for his Gauchos. For Petaluma, head coach Rick Christie wanted a complete game, and they certainly played close to that. And he was also worried about the passing attack at Casa, and the, the defense has totally slowed down Jada Borsage for the most part. Agya with a little bit of a longer kick. And again, great coverage downfield. Casa Grande will start at the 32 yard line. Rashad Nixon, the junior wide receiver, on the return. Two experienced times, experienced teams. This has been well played by both sides. We see a few penalties, just one turnover. And the better football team is getting right now looks like they're going to win this game. You never know, though, in a rivalry game. For Casa Grande, you got to stay in there and not panic. They just need one spark to turn around this game. We thought maybe the touchdown at the end of the half would be it. But the Petaluma offense responds, and Cole Powers has looked comfortable, even dealing with his sickness. And Hartman was at the controls for Petaluma early, did a good job. Nowhere to go for Herrera up the middle. Petaluma defensive line has been all over the rushing attack. Kenny Alexander in on the tackle. He's been a big factor for the Trojans, also on the varsity basketball team. And first year ever playing football, he's really been a revelation on the defensive end. 6'4", 240 pounds. He's just so hard to block. Really adds to that physicality that the Trojans bring. Screen and stumbling and falling is Jordan Gramajo, who's... Another athletic player that can get a big play for Casa Grande, but they have not had too many of them tonight. Picks up a few, and it brings up a third and three. It might have gone the first if he hadn't fell down. And the Trojans jumped. Alexander jumped, but he got back. They're pointing at the refs, but if you don't follow a flag, then you have to go. And you can get back on onside. If the ball is not snapped, you get back on side, and you don't trigger the offense to move. It's not off sides. Up the middle, or Sarge reaching for the sticks. It's close to the marker, and it is enough for the first down. Or Sarge hasn't done a lot with his legs either. He's been quiet there, and that's a, certainly something that you would have wanted to involve, though they do not run a read option as they quickly snap it again to Herrera, hoping to catch the pedal mid-defense off guard, but... He's quickly brought down. Our Sarge with 385 rushing yards coming into today. And Trojan defense that's been up and down. We asked at the beginning of the the the, season, the beginning of this broadcast what defense would we see for Petaluma? The defense that was gashed by Justin Siena and El Molino and Santa Rosa and run over by Vintage and struggled in the second half against Napa. The team we saw in the first half against Napa, where they shut out the Grizzlies. Slowed Sonoma Valley, played well against American Canyon. And we've seen that second defense. That's the good defense for Petaluma. It's Jekyll and Hyde, really, for Petaluma defense. Comeback route to McHale right at the sticks. And that will move the sticks again. Gianni Johnson forces him out. Bursage throwing a pretty ball right now. Casa moving their way down the field. JV, both JV teams wrapped up their season. It was a really good one and also a low scoring affair. And Casa with a late touchdown to take a 13 7 lead and then a late interception added it to make it 13 7. Meanwhile, a huge run all the way down to the nine. And the first big play of the game by the Gauchos. Alex Johnson, the senior running back, who backs up Herrera. Breaks one up the middle, and the first time there's been a hole in the defensive line for Petaluma. Down to the nine, and a 30-yard run for Johnson. Screen to Gramajo. Good blocking by the Gauchos. 
trucks at Trojan, and he's down right to the one. Casa students thought he was in. Just short, but he'll get the first. Johnson's been more effective than Herrera tonight running the football. Herrera only 100, Herrera 464 yards coming in. And Johnson, a lot quieter, 253, kind of backs up Herrera, junior running back. A big rush there, and Costa trying to rush to the line. But the rest stopped them due to some substitutions, and now they'll huddle and reset. Five minutes remaining here in the third quarter, 21 to 7. Gauchos are in, touchdown. So answer for answer here to start this second half. Alex Johnson, the big run, Gramajo punches it in, and it's 21-13. And both offenses are moving the ball down the field right now with ease. Casa getting some late players on. All important extra point here. McKissick. Not a pretty looking PAT, but anything through the uprights counts as a point. That's all that matters. It's good. 21-14. We've got 459 remaining here in the third quarter. And a Casa Grande offense res responds with a score. And the question is, can the defense get a stop, get a turnover, and slow it down? Because both offenses looking comfortable. Even the rushing game getting going for Casa, doing a good job there, helping install their will on the line. And Trojan defensive line that's been up and down. We talked about the defense. They want they they really pride themselves on slowing down rushers. They did a great job at Eddie Bird song, the star running back against American Cannon. They even did a good job against Vintage slowing down Balami Shumakal, who's gonna go to a D1 school. But they're starting to get worn down a little bit. Casa really didn't get much going, but if you just get those one or two yard rushes in the first half, it can start to pay off in the second half. Back on field. So what we saw on that last drive. McKissick to kick it away. They've continued to avoid Freitas. Smartly so. You're, you'd rather give up extra 10 yards to the Petaluma offense than risk a, a return for a touchdown. They get to the other side of the field, but they kick it out of bounds. That's not what you want to do, and Petaluma will get to start at the 40. Poor kick by McKissick. It's a lengthy old grinded out rivalry game has been all we could have asked for and all we could have anticipated. Both schools certainly anticipating us all week. Petaluma had their spirit week this week and it was a lot of fun to see many of the students participate and all the build up was for this one on Saturday afternoon and there was almost more anticipation for this one as there was for the first Egg Bowl after the five year hiatus last year just because it was a, a rematch and Petaluma could reassert its bragging rights, or Casa Grande can take them back. Really add it to the fun. Petaluma decides to take the penalty and re-kick it, which means Casa will have to kick it five yards back now from the 40. The band, Petaluma band, drum rolling as we Get ready to go. Take two for McKissick, and he just boots it deep. But Hartman's going to take it. He's also speedy. Makes a man miss. And down to the 34, the re-kick turns out working out all right for the Gauchos. That's where the Petaluma offense will start. They have not punted the football all game long. They've been stopped on fourth down once and had it saw the end of that half. Been a terrific performance by this Petaluma offense. Coming off a 41 point game against Napa where they 454 yards of offense against the Grizzlies. 
And certainly that this triple option dual threat attack for Petaluma is going to be hard for anyone to stop, including an NCS. Give to Prieto and finds a hole. Picks up four or five yards. And as long as he can keep on picking up three or four yards, they're going to keep on feeding the beast. And you can just move down the field that way, grind down the clock, and keep the ball out of Jaden Borsarge and the electric Casa Grande offense. Remind all our viewers to subscribe to the channel, and whenever we go live, you get an email. So when we have our as Powers goes forward for a first down on the QB run, six yards, we have the winter sports winter sports season coming up. Varsity basketball girls basketball team. Our first live stream will be right before Thanksgiving. For that one, as they. We'll certainly have a shot at a BDAL title, the girls' basketball team. Boys' basketball team a little bit younger, but they should have some fun players as well. And the wrestling team will be also looking for a league title after winning SCL last year. Their first league meet in late December is the Toss to Freitas. And that's just it looks like it's enough for the sticks again. 12 more yards. They view Freitas sparingly, and it's kind of use your best resource only when you need them or when they need to change the pace and it's, it's really worked effectively they've used them a lot less than they have in the past than this one Freight is also leading the team in catches coming in 137 yard through the air averaging 10 yards per rush and he's been similar to that again Prieto grinding his legs for another solid pickup. Four more yards, second and six. A call second and five as we tick towards three as we near the end of the third quarter. From beautiful Steve Ellison Field of the Egg Bowls, the sun's starting to slowly set. And we move into Saturday evening, and not a seat to be had anywhere, whether in the bleachers and the stands. And some have even set up on the grass hill on the home side. Also a fine perch to watch this one. Prieto bouncing off his offensive line. And a couple more. It's going to bring up a third and short. Mentioned all those third downs that Petaluma converted. They had so many third and shorts. It's kind of a remarkable stat. They were five for eight on third downs in that first half. That, that is, you just do not see that in any place in football these days. Because it's all about throwing it downfield and going for the big play. And, Head coach Rick Chris, it's design a system that's the opposite. It can be hard to defend because they're not a traditional offense. Coach Rick Chris also looking for his second Egg Bowl victory loss when he took over in 2010. And then the game ended after the 2011 season with some ugly incidents. Those, both those games were a lopsided Costa Grande blowouts. That didn't help. And it helps that both teams are a lot more equal now when they play. And besides a couple of footballs being thrown at me and the did also see both flags being run around the track. It got a little tense then, but besides that, and especially on the field, we have not seen any incidences. Incidents is Powers avoids an incident with a good read option and the take to the left side behind his left guard, Nick Sambito, on all SCL last year for another first down. And there is no answer right now on this Costa Grande defense for this pedal offense. And coach Rick Chris, they got his 50th victory last week against Napa in his career here at Petaluma. He's 50 and 35 overall. His ninth season now with the helm. It's an end around at Pedersen that worked in the first half for a first down, but this time he has stood up by a, certainly a frustrated Casa defense. Walsh in on the tackle. And he, I mean, you have to be very frustrated with the Casa Grande defense. They really battled hard. They fought. They've avoided the big play, something that the Trojans can do. But they've just been worn down. It's like they're an orange getting slowly and painfully beaten to the pulp. And Powers 
continuing to manage this game so well as he has most of the year. Freitas cutting back. A couple fancy moves, picking up a few more, and making it a third and about five. Gramajo in on the tackle, one of the, him and Kropisky, the two leading tacklers on the year for Casa Grande. Saw a lot of alums, former players out on the field prior to the game. They've made their way from college around California just because this game matters so much to them, and especially the, some of the seniors that were on the team last year. Saw them down on the field. Traveled to this one. Freitas gets it to the left. He's got a hole, and it closed just in time to avoid him dancing in the end zone. But enough for the first down as Trojans march deeper into Casa red zone. First and goal at the nine. Someone in the pedal of the trying to sing. It's not great sounding, but so far this pedal of my offense is singing beautifully. 21 to 14 with pedal of threatening. We have 12 more minutes decide the Egg Bowl winner, Petaluma and Casa Grande, coming down to the final quarter here from Steve Ellison Field. We're going to let you listen into the band at this quarter break, and we'll be back right after this. of the fourth quarter here. You're the Petaluma High School band. Excellent job throughout the game. The Trojans take over at the nine, switch sides of the field. The game to Freitas. Spinning his way forward, diving into the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. Freitas with his first touchdown of the afternoon. Much deserved for the senior running back. And the Petaluma retakes a two-possession lead. This offense cannot be stopped. The fifth touchdown of the year for Freire. Oh, no, I'm very much miscounted. The 11th touchdown of the year for Freitas on the ground. Possibly playing his final game in Ellison Field, where he certainly made his mark. And that could be a big one. Hagia boots the extra point through. It's 28-14. to 14. 11.54 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Trojan defense just feels like they need one stop and they can put this game away. They are certainly just running so smoothly on the offensive end. This offense is pieced together a complete game, something that Coach Rick Chris hasn't seen all year. The offense, the defense, special teams play well together. I'm not sure that the defense has been perfect tonight. The Costa Grande offense has certainly played better later in this game. But the offense for Petaluma, it's been remarkable. It's been totally unstoppable, this entire Egg Bowl. And they have not been phased by the whole build-up to this game and all the voices that come around between Casa Grande and Petaluma and after the, 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 the some tense volleyball games with Casa Grande winning both volleyball games in five sets between the two. A lot of tensions on both sides, a lot of build-up to this game and get distracted on social media or whatever. Trojans have really looked focused and practice is key and they've obviously been very focused and practice and ready for this game. Back on field. Hog, yeah, ready to send it away again. He's done an excellent job. 
36 kickoffs coming into today, averaging 30.9 yards on his kickoffs. It's a shorter one. Good field position for Casa Grande due to the short kick. Well fielded by freshman Antonio Bernardini. It's uh, mostly senior seniors that play on this Casa team, but the one underclassmen on the Gauchos. So the Casa Grande offense has worked in their grinded out slow attack, but as you head into the fourth quarter, tackle on Ryan, by Ryan Ramos on that play, as you move into the fourth quarter, you do have to start to be concerned if you have a Casa Grande offense about that they have limited time. The clock is not their friend. Or Sarge can look downfield, he might need to. It's Gramajo up the middle, about seven yards before he's pushed back. Nice tackle by Kenny Alexander, who's had a, another terrific game for this Petaluma defense. Nick Ayers, their pony of the day at the linebacker position, but we talked about the young secondary and that being a key, and Freitas has made an interception. He's pretty much shut down Dominic McHale, the leading wide receiver for Casa Grande. Hartman and Howard have been big in the secondary as well. Here's a hole. Breaking a tackle and all the way down to the 10. Oh, how'd he stand up? He's going to go into the end zone. Touchdown, Casa, and they do respond quickly. Alex Johnson again. There's no reason to have Matt Herrera out there because Alex Johnson is doing an excellent job rushing. He breaks a couple tackles, broke Kando's tackle. It looked, however, that Johnson was going to be brought down at the 10. He was spun around, but you got to wrap up something that the Federal Mid defense has done a good job of all day, but he does not wrap up there. And the Gauchos strike quickly. Right back in this one. Back and forth we go. Extra point is good. This is low scoring no longer. 28-21. And the pressure goes right back to the Petaluma offense, who will blink first in this rivalry game. Feel free to keep all the comments going on the live chat. We'll try to get to them. You can like this video and check out all of our other football videos. We Petaluma, all of Petaluma football coverage will be up for the rest of tonight, but it will be coming down at the end of the night, and the Egg Bowl will be up until tomorrow night, and then those will be back up on Thursday, but NCS teams don't always like to share film, so we are taking all Petaluma football film down for precautionary reasons. So if you want to check out any of the other football that we've covered over the course of this year, check it out, of course, years past or the Volleyball games we've been to. Petaluma volleyball team wrapped up their season. That's all on our YouTube channel as well. The Petaluma student section has been rocking all night long. Or all afternoon long. This cost gets ready to kick it away. McKissick to kick it away. It's a long liner. Yeah, I do. Hartman looking for a whole excellent tackle. Hartman dangerous, but Chris Solis comes and makes the tackle to my bag. Sure, the special teams haven't been able to break a big one in 11 minutes left. You you hope for five, five or six minutes and another touchdown. And it wouldn't put this game away, but it would put it in dire straits for Casa, who would have to go out of their normal offense if that happened. Jordans will start at the 29. And certainly it's, it's Powers that is leading the offense. The, the Gaucho walks in front of me. Also, I think I saw the Trojan mascot out as well. Both mascots out. Give to Prieto for six yards up the middle. As he continues to grind it out, we will be talking to the stars of the game afterwards, and they'll be on our daily morning show. So if you want to get more coverage of the Egg Bowl and all Petaluma High School sports, you can check out every morning at 8.30 on our YouTube channel live 
our Church and Live Morning Show, and also upload it so you can check it out whenever you want. Also, get some U Sports Network highlights, so if you haven't seen the whole game and don't want to rewatch it, we'll have full highlights on U Sports Network up tonight as well. Sonoma County's professional high school sports broadcasting station, Prieto again for three more yards, and it brings up a thir big third and four. Just feels like Petaluma is going to convert these because they have all afternoon long. There's really been no resistance from the defensive line. The green and gold. Freitas is the back. Only has one big rush today. It was a 30 yard rush in the first quarter. I might have not gone there. Hole closed quickly. Was enough. It was close as he died forward, but just enough. Otherwise, it would have been a very tough decision for head coach Rick Chris whether to go for it. Certainly a big sigh of relief out of the Petaluma fans. Petaluma nine minutes and a handful of seconds away from back-to-back -back Egg Bowl victories for the first time in nine years. And the first victory, Nelson Field, and then here's the ball is out. And Costa Grande is recovered. We talked about a play that could turn around this game, and we might have just seen it. Matthew Murphy, the senior captain, on this Casa Grande defense, rips the ball out of Garrett Freda's hands. He fumbled twice against Napa, and a huge turn over in the student section for Casa Grande making noise, and uh, their offense gets right back out there against what has to be now a tired pedal mid defense. Screen play. Trones have done an excellent job on screens all afternoon long, only a few on that. But turnovers are even now. And a huge turnaround play by the Gauchos. It's the last thing you can afford, but certainly yeah, I mean, uh, defensively, the only way they seem to stop this Petaluma offense was a turnover, and that's just what they have done. Second and about nine. Johnson, who scored the touchdown last drive, has stood up. Alexander in the backfield for the tackle for loss. Ayers in as well, who's had another huge game leading the linebackers. The 6,200 pound senior leads the team in tackles. Third down, and about nine, and Morisar just gonna air it out here. A Trojan secondary might be the difference. Thought they would, would be at the beginning of the game. They're gonna be tested here, or they're not gonna need to be as Ayers brought him down, and Morisar is able to get it away. That is a forward pass, but Nick Ayers in the backfield for a bring down Borsarge. Second time, Borsarge has been pressured by Ayers. He nearly threw a pick at the end of the first half. This one he was able to get away. But a huge play by Borsarge. My Ayers, excuse me, making the tackle. Refs are having a conversation, but it was clearly a forward pass. And it's going to bring up a fourth down that you have no question but to go for if you're Casagrande with eight minutes remaining. Ruling on the field, incomplete pass, clearly the play. And Borsarge, when he's had time, has been able to find open receivers, but it's certainly been when the Trojans have been able to get to him and pressure him, he's panicked. Two split out to the right, two to the left, and shots it is to the right of Borsarge. Fourth and nine, play of the game so far. Trojan students actually jumping up and down. Borsarge has a man for the first down. What a completion. He was down. That will not be a score. Carson Kerrigan has been the wide receiver for Borsarge to find when he needed someone, and he finds Kerrigan for a huge conversion. 
15 yards on the hookup. And Casa moves the ball down to the 20. What a gutsy pass by Borsage. Senior quarterback took over for Chance Offerman halfway through the year last year. He's been the starter all year long for the Gauchos. Also a big, big football fan. I know he's written a couple articles for the Argus Courier. He's done an excellent job there as well. Johnson shedding tackles. What a revelation he has been in the second half. He has a first down and inside the Trojan 10, Alex Johnson. Out of nowhere has given Petaluma all sorts of trouble. Connor Pedersen is going to limp off the field. That's a concern. The Trojan secondary leader getting checked out by the Trojan trader, but he is struggling to hold his own weight right now, and he's off to the sideline on a second goal. Borsarge looking to take it himself. What a move out wide. He dives for the pylon. He's not in, though. No, now he's in a very late signal. A climactic decision, but he is in. Touchdown, Gauchos, and they are an extra point away from tying this game up for the first time since it was 0-0. What an athletic move by Borsars. That was a pro quarterback move. Getting out of the pocket, racing around, making a couple Trojan defenders fall down, and an excellent job to reach inside the pylon for the score. Do they go for two? They do, they're going for two. What a play here. The give up the middle, diving. He's in, Grabajo is in. The risky play, Casagrande has taken the lead. 29-28 in a game that Petaluma has controlled for much of it. They find themselves losing in the fourth quarter. What a turnaround, a 15-0 run in the last three minutes. And it's the rushing attack, Alex Johnson for Casa Grande that has turned things around. And suddenly the pressure on the Petaluma offense to grind the clock out, but thought at least they'd be tied. Coach Dennis Brug, that's <laughs> probably the sign of not trusting his defense, decides to go for it. And it pays off. I don't think the Petaluma defense was expecting it already. It was a quick huddle. An excellent play. 29-28. We have an injured Gaucho out on the field. So that is the reason for the stoppage. Back on me. Oh, not back on me. Uh, back on me, please. But what, what a turnaround in these last couple minutes. Petaluma felt like they were in control of this one. But one play can change it. And it was that, that fumble as the Casa Grande lineman able to get, off, uh, get up under his own power. So that's good to see. But that one fumble changing everything was score for score, back and forth. And this Casa Grande offense is really moving the football right now. They're doing a great job. It's a question of can this Petaluma defense get Petaluma offense get back to the basics? And now there's more pressure than there was all game. Petaluma absolutely the favorite going into this one. They have a better record, better league standing. But it's anyone's game right now on the Petaluma offense. It's in Cole Powers, Garrett Freitas in this offensive hand to try to win this football game. Back on the field. McKissick to boot it away. Trojan student section trying to encourage him support. It's going to be loud for these final seven minutes of this one. Last year, Casa got the ball. It's about late in that fourth, three separate times, trailing by seven and was never able to score. A little bit of an opposite scenario. An excellent kick by McKissick. He boots it through the end zone. I don't know why he hasn't done that all day. So the Petaluma will start at the 25, and that's the worst field position they're going to have all day. But they have 7.08, all three timeouts, and plenty of time to score. And certainly Daxon Hogia is a reliable kicker. This would be the biggest kick of his life, but he certainly has an opportunity. And you can hear the Trojan student section chanting, but it is a nervous cheer right now. My goodness, what a ball game this has been. Sit back and relax and enjoy these final seven minutes. This has been a long game as well. 
You know the defenses have to be tired at this point. Got to control it. Okay, keep possession of the ball. Obviously something that was an issue. And cost pedaled on the last possession. It is Freitas who fumbled last possession. Three yards and right back to the attack. They're not going to go away from the grind it out up the middle. Triple option dual threat that head coach Rick Chris likes just because they're trailing. Edelman has not won a game that they have trailed except in their season opener. Freitas breaks a tackle. Looked like he would have a seam, but an excellent job wrapping up to avoid a big play. Freitas, oh, we've lost the video up top. Are they changing the battery or we just, it looks like they're changing the battery. All right, we're going to get that up top camera back for you in just a moment. Okay, switch to... Switch to scoreboard cam, please. All right, we're gonna feel. We're gonna try to film through the fence. There we go. It's gonna be a little challenging to see, but we'll do what we can until we get the up top back for you. Should be just a moment. Big third down here and moving the pile. Should be enough for the first down, Prieto. We have top. Oh, got the up top camera. Hopefully, in just a moment for you. A hard far run by Prieto. We've gone under six minutes and a one point lead for the Gauchos. There you see their student section right to the left of the broadcast booth here. Power set again for Petaluma. To the right and a nice run by Prieto breaking some tackles and he's close to another first down. Nine yards by the senior running back. He has grinded it out. And he's looking to do that. 5.30 and counting left to go. And certainly in no rush. If this starts to... Okay, we're switch. All right, we're back up top. And certainly if we do get later in this game, you start to look at timeouts. Freitas down the sideline, and he's got more. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm getting the scoreboard. Can you fix this, Kaylee? Get it on the scoreboard. Thank you. Stoppage, 29-28. 5.06 left. Excellent job by Kaylee Smith, who's having to reset our scoreboard cam, but is mainly getting yelled at by my students. We have a penalty. The holding is the call on that nine-yard Freitas run, so that moves it back to second and ten. 5.06 remaining in the fourth. No, 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 on the score. Second and ten. Powers has Prieto wide open in the flat. Down the sideline, breaks the tackle. Prieto still going all the way down to the 35. Calls it Prieto on a long completion. And he took a big hit out of bounds. But the big senior gets up okay. That play has worked all day long for the Trojans. Wow. Four fifty-seven left here in the fourth. It's another power set. Give to Pedersen up the middle. He's got four yards. Just ah. I just need to like just oh now now in on focus. Well, we're trying to get that scoreboard cam fixed for you, but. I can tell you the score, and it's 4.30 and counting 29-28. 
second and four. Diamond formation for Petaluma. They continue to wind down this clock. Prieto tries to go over the pile. Not a lot of room. If you can't get it, then we can forget about it. Third and a few. Something the Trojans have done an excellent job of converting third downs. It's been Prieto grinding it out on these third downs. And once again, he is in the backfield. It's Diamond form with Patterson to the right. Consagrano students actually getting loud. 350. Prieto. Oh no, it's a big five powers and it's a disaster! What in the world were they trying there? I do not know, but it absolutely failed. And it had worked all day long to go with just Prieto up the middle for whatever reason. Powers faked it and... Okay, Powers tried to roll out and it did not work. They are at the 31 yard line. There's 319 and counting. This would be a 49 yard field goal, which would take the lead. And they always just feel like that's too far. Fourth and six. Powers fakes, rolls out, under pressure. He's got Freitas in the flat and he's got blockers. Will he get there? He just gets to the marker as he dives forward. And Freitas has the first down, down to the 20. A screenplay to the best player on the field. That's how the Trojans converted a fourth down to win the game against Justin Siena and put that game away in the tightest game that Petaluma had played up till now. A very similar play to move the sticks to the 20. Under three to go. Casa Grande has all three timeouts if they need them. First and 10, Prieto in the backfield. What a finish to this one. Buckle your seatbelts for these final two and a half minutes. Powers letting the clock run down. You don't want to take a delay game penalty, though. Prieto. Continuing to drive those legs. And he's down to the 14. The, the advisable thing here, if you're Petaluma, is running that clock as much as possible. And you want to give it to Casa with seconds left on the clock. Similar scenario at the end of the first half. But one minute left when they scored, and that was enough time for the Gauchos to move down the field with all their timeouts and scored a touchdown with two seconds left. You can't do that here. Two minutes to go. Fourth quarter, 29, Casa Grande, 28, Petaluma. Second and three. Prieto. Not a lot. Not going to reach the six. It's going to be third and very short again. Under two left to go. If they get another first down, they'll be at goal. 138 left to go. Petaluma offense has never punted all game long. They did get stopped, though, once in the red zone on a fourth. Hartman threw an incompletion. Give to Prieto. Got maybe one, but it's enough for the first. And you, Casa Grande does use a timeout. That's exactly what you would have thought at this point, that the Gauchos would start using those timeouts and stop the clock. No, I'm sorry, I thought that was a signal. That they stop the clock. If you're Casa Grande, you at least think about stopping the clock now because you're not, okay, now they do, you do use the timeouts. So they use the timeout, you stop the clock. These timeouts right now, if you could put it back on me, these timeouts are, oh, we've got, We've got an ad. These timeouts are a lot more valuable right now for Costa Grande to stop the clock now just because they want to get the ball back with about a minute left if Petaluma scores and have enough time. You can't save them because you're only going to get the ball with about 20 seconds left. Those three timeouts, you won't be able to use them all. So they're going to use probably all three timeouts. But it's a weird situation for Petaluma. Yes, you want to score and make sure you want to score, but you also don't want to give Casa Grande the ball back too early and give Casa too much time for an offense right now for the Gauchos that is really cruising and playing really good football. So what does Petaluma do? How do the players approach that? It is fascinating here. We've seen a couple scenarios in pro football and college football where you want to score, but you don't want to score too early. And players almost trying not to get into the end zone. Defensive players trying to let them in. I don't think you can. Let's get back on field. Let's get back on field is 
We have more footballs being thrown at me. Yes, I love having footballs being thrown at me. But I don't think Casa Grande lets Petaluma in here. You still trust your defense to keep you out. But if you get close to the goal line on this first snap, I could wouldn't be surprised me if Rieto, wherever the Trojan running back in, just falls down. It's Powers himself surging forward, and he's down to about the two. So that's exactly where you want to put it. Casa Grande does not look like they're... Nope, they are going to use the timeout. Dennis Brunt calls the timeout. 106 remaining in the fourth quarter. They have one timeout left. Everyone is stressed. You can hear the nerves on the Casa Grande side, the Petaluma side. Uh, last year's game was, was certainly a stressful one. Casa Grande had three opportunities to score the tying touchdown. They turned it over twice and were stopped on fourth down. And their final possession with one minute left. And Trones took a knee to win 2014. This game has had a lot of similarities. It's been kind of low scoring in a way, but the offense has been dominant. They've just been gutsy and pulled out a victory and pulled out touchdowns. But that two-point conversion by Costa Grande, the reason that they lead 29-28, but that, that turnover, of course, turned around this game. Freitas ripped it out, and the Gauchos went on a 15-0 run. It's been another terrific drive by Petaluma, though, moving the ball downfield. But if Petaluma does win this game, remember that fourth down conversion from Powers to Freitas. Powers with a man in his face, throwing it out to Freitas, and credit to the offensive line for paving a highway for the score. Here we go. Second to goal from the one. Give to Prieto. He's in. Touchdown, Trojans. And Petaluma retakes the lead. 103 remaining in the fourth quarter. Petaluma is back in front. What a drive. Unbelievable. 34-29. Now if you're Trojans, you may as well go for two. There is no use in just kicking an extra point. Five or six points doesn't make a difference. But if they can get two back here, they can potentially, even if Casa scores, send it to overtime. Prieto in the backfield. Powers under center. Now Freitas and Pedersen will both go behind Prieto. Well, it's a fake. Looking in the end zone. What a play. It's Derek Pomey. Touch their two-point conversion for Petaluma. That was excellent. We run. Costa expecting the run. And Powers rolling on out. He claims he was sick, but boy, he hasn't looked sick. And they find Nick Ayers, the tight end, who nearly had a touchdown earlier with a huge two-point conversion. It's a seven-point lead, 36-29. The Petaluma students and fans are going berserk. And with 1.02 remaining in the fourth, Casa Grande will have a similar chance to the halftime, about the same amount of time to score. One big difference, though, they had all three timeouts when they were able to go down the field and score. Here, they only have one timeout. Back on me, please. So one timeout for Casa Grande. We'll see how the kickoff goes. But, boy, they've run the ball well without Johnson. Borsarge has looked comfortable. And when the line has protected him, Casa has moved down the field. They have plenty of time to tie this game up and potentially go for two and win it if they get there. Coach Dennis Brunk is really playing very aggressive right now in his play calling. I wouldn't be surprised if Costa does score if they go for two. Let's head on field. Appreciate everyone tuning in. We have 55 viewers tuning in right now. Alex Dodd is tuning in. And it's a pleasure to have you for the end of this 2018 Egg Bowl. Trojans trying to win back-to-back -back Egg Bowls since 2008-2009 and their first Egg Bowl victory at Steve Ellison Field since 2009. Casa trying to retake the Egg Bowl that they last won in 2011. It's a short kick. It sits on the ground for a long time and then it hit very hard at the 27. My goodness, what a hit. Matt Herrera picked up the football, but he got a punishing hit. Prieto was in the area. As was Ryan Ramos. Special teams has been excellent tonight. 
for Petaluma, and it's not great starting field position for the Casa Grande offense. They'll spot the ball at the 28 yard line. 28 yard, or not 28 yards, 72 yards for Casa Grande to go to try to tie up this game. Try to retake the Ed Bowl. They won in 2010-2011 before we went on a six year hiatus and returned last year. Trones won in a thriller and this has been another all time classic at Steve Ellison Field. Forsage will run it himself. He's got room up the middle. He breaks the tackle. Look out. Borsarge is going to head to the sideline, but a huge gain for Jaden Borsarge. He looked like he had seven or eight yards and then somehow kept on moving his legs. They didn't bring him down. The linebacking has been so good for Petaluma all day, but there they could not tackle Borsarge, who's so athletic with his legs. And just like that, Casa Grande is in business. 50.8 left, and Derek Pomey slow to get off the field with his helmet off. He's limping. He's the defensive captain, one of the great leaders on the Trojans. I was watching a little Petaluma practice yesterday, and he was very loud and talking to the whole team. He's one of the great leaders. So he stumbles off the field. And Petaluma will hope that he returns, but that means that we'll have to get someone else out there for him. Both student sections trying to encourage their squads. Casa sets up shop at the 44 now, first and 10. 50.8 seconds left. 36-29, Petaluma leads Casa Grande. Pressure, it's a fluttering pass incomplete. Pressure is brought. The blitz has worked for the defense. Borsage with a man in his face is panicked and did again. Pressure brought and he just Threw it wildly, lucky to get it away. Multiple Trojans in on the pressure. Herrera nearly actually made a short catch, but really better that it fall, fell incomplete. It stops the clock with 43.9 seconds left to go. Johnson is to Borsarge's left. Johnson has certainly been good. Borsarge will fake, it takes off, and he's got a hole. Excellent tackle made down at the 31. And that will be enough for the first down. So that will stop the clock. The Gauchos can either rush up and run a quick play. They lose a couple seconds or they can spike it and they'll lose no time. It looks like they're set up to spike. And they will clock it. They still lose a few seconds. 34.2 seconds left. 36-29 and Casa Grande at the 32-yard line. My goodness, if you missed any of this, the full game is will be up on our YouTube channel. You can go back and watch any of it for the rest of the weekend. This place is loud. First and ten. For Sarge in the gun, Johnson to his left. Audible call. Spirit senior quarterback. He's looking downfield and he's got a man! It's caught! Touchdown, Casa! What a catch! We are taught, or we will be await the extra point. Unbelievable! What a throw from Barsage, and what a catch! The Casa students and fans are going crazy. Do they go for two, or do they kick the extra point and go to overtime? The Gauchos certainly have to have the momentum, but they went for two last time, and they scored. They look like they're going for two. This could be the game right here. 28 seconds left. Costa huddling, but expected to come away with timeout. Petaluma has called timeout. If Costa's still in the huddle because they didn't hear the whistles, it's so loud, but that is smart. The defense needs a breather. That is backbreaking. What a play by Jaden Borsarge. Oh, we're on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's the score right now. What a play by Jaden Borsarge. Down the field, and he beat Connor Pedersen, the best secondary player, over the top. But it, was, it wasn't horrible coverage. Doing an exceptional throw, a leaping catch in the corner of the end zone. And if Conso wins that, that will be one that is no, I've never forgotten on the east side. No, we've lost the camera. 
Get, get it, get it back, please. All right, and we're gonna go for two. We have lost the up top camera. Is, is it there? Oh, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Okay, Ian fix us. They are lining up like they're gonna go for two. Oh, what's up? It's wait, are we not up top? It's not working though. Okay, no, no, no. We're using this for the game. We're using this for the game. So Casa looks like they're gonna go for it. They're lined up at least. They could try to draw them off sides. They still have a timeout. Run to the left, and they're in. Casa has taken the lead on the two by conversion. Unbelievable stuff here at Steve Ellison Field. 37-36. They go for two. They get to Johnson, and yet yeah, all this whole line has been excellent. The student section is going nuts. Schroeders have one timeout left. They have 28 seconds for a miracle. Do we have up top? Do we have up top? Up. What's going on? I'll try to get the up top camera for you. But what a finish here. There's still time for Petaluma, and we'll see what the kickoff is. But what a final drive by Casa Grande. And you just think back, maybe Petaluma should have taken a little bit more time when they ran down the clock. But after that turnover, this game is turned to do. Who has the ball last? And right now it's been Casa Grande who had the ball last, but there's still 28 seconds left for Petaluma. Freitas is back, and remember what he can do. McKissick to kick it away. If we get up top, please go to it. McKissick kicks it long. Havard feels it and he'll receive it. Havard going to the left looking for some room and he's brought it down at the 30. You want to watch for any flags that could cost the team. But there's 21.2 seconds left. Do we have? We don't have up top. Right off. Petaluma will start at the 27. They have two timeouts. A first down will also stop the clock. And it's a situation here where you got to look downfield, and Garrett Freitas is your best option. You can catch the football. He's over 100 receiving yards catching the ball. And he is a threat to break one at any time. Powers, not accustomed to looking downfield, but he's going to have to do it now. Freitas is split up behind him, and there's only one wide receiver to the left. And they will run the ball. Freitas spinning. Nowhere to go. I'm going to have to use the timeout. That's 14.6 seconds left, too. That took up time. And it didn't do anything. I mean, it, it, I, I know that you, you want to give it to your best player, but I don't think running the football right now is the best option. So the Trojans will take a timeout. They have one remaining. You have to pass the football now. You cannot run the football. There's just not enough time. What a thriller this has been at Ellison Field. And it's gone to the point where whoever lost the game, it was going to be heartbreaking. Do you check the tarot deck to make sure? Oh, no. So 14.6, we're going to be on this cam for the rest of the game. One timeout left. Powers with time. Freitas in the flat. you got to get out of bounds here, and he does. There's only 9.5 seconds left. Out to the 39. If they can find a quick slant, possibly over the middle, 
you could possibly get it range for a hog at field goal, but that's still about four, 30 yards away. That's going to be hard to do at 9.5. Your best bet is a sideline route here. You get about to the 50, and that's far enough that Powers can just throw it up in the end zone for Hale Berry. And a chance for a miracle. Freitas in the backfield, and only one split to the left. They do have a timeout if they just want to run it. Nope. Powers sets up a screen, and Freitas just jogs out of bounds, only well, picked up a few. 4.7 seconds left. There's not enough time left for probably another play. It's going to go really quick to the sideline, like they did on that last play. This is the ball game. Fredo behind him. There is no running backs out there, or no wide receivers out there. And they take it to Freitas, the sweep. There's no going to be time left. Freitas is down, and that is the ball game. Casa Grande will storm the field, and they win the final score here from Steve Ellison Field. The Gauchos 37, the Trojans 36. Yeah, hold on. Can you make sure I have audio, Kaylee? All right.
Well, Civilly? This is all you <laughs> want. This is all you want in a, in a uh, high school football game. Between two Hold levels. And it, was, it was a really good game. Oh. It, was, it was back and forth. It was whoever had the ball last. Can you put on... Can I see myself? Can you put it on the OBS so I can see myself? Oh, I'm out of frame. Hello, friends. <laughs> Yeah, that's a shame, and it really sucks because we we really did put up a good front the entire game, and we were ahead, and they pull ahead by one point. And if anybody from Casa, from the stands, is watching this, and you were the ones harassing us, we were, I'm just saying, just in case they come back and watch this later because they were mocking us. That's so. No. Griffin, you're too optimistic here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's hard. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be very hard for Pebble to football to turn around. They still have NCS. They still have hope left in the season that they can win an NCS game and continue their year. Uh, but this has got to be one of the most heartbreaking losses yeah. of head coach Rick Chris' career. Uh, it did just get to be a heartbreaking loss for all the players, especially the seniors who beat Costa last year. And fall here, and I, I, we'll, we'll look at the stats. We'll have them Monday morning. But I think I will probably statistically will lead this, um, but it, it's that one turnover. Pedalo was back and forth. Both teams were scoring. Garrett Freitas had the ball stripped late in the <sighs> third quarter, and it looked like it was going to be back and forth. Pedalo goes up two possessions, then up one, then up two, then up one, because both teams were scoring, and that's what we saw to finish the game. But yeah. The Freitas fumble, Costa responds and scores, and how bad Alex Johnson for Costa Grande. If you want to get one player that was a difference maker for the Gauchos, it was Alex Johnson. Terrific rushing the football tonight for Costa. He was unstoppable in the second half. And in the end, you have to give a lot of credit to Jaden Borsarge and the Costa Grande offense. The pedal defense couldn't stop them. And they've had so many ups and downs this year. And Coach Chris talked about, we have to put a complete game together. And if they did put a complete game together, Petaluma would have walked off the football field before. Yeah, I mean, we did we did put up a good game, I really think, and I think that it's all right, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, someone had to lose this game, and it did get to the point, especially after the Freitas turnover, it was back and forth, that one team was going to have to lose, and it was going to be heartbreaking, no doubt. And also, credit to Dennis Brunk, and he went for two twice, and the way the Costa Grande offensive line was moving the football, I apologize if there's any sign behind us, uh, Brunk went for two twice, and that worked out for them very well. I feel so abused. The two, uh, like, I know. Nothing is, nothing is personal. Um, certainly a game like this will make the rest of the Costa Grande pedal games the rest of the year more intense. Uh, basketball, uh, that's going to be fun. We'll, we'll be live for all of that <laughs> as well. <laughs> Well, uh, Casa Grande, once again here, 3635, a heartbreaking loss. I do want to thank uh, all the help we've done here at the Egg Bowl today. Gracie Riddell on camera, Kaylee Smith uh, doing everything, and Jamie Cantieri directing as well. I want to thank Mr. Victor Brazil. Uh, this is the final uh, football live stream that both of us will have. Oh here. my god, that's so sad! The last one here at Steve Ellison Field. Um, the last game ever played here for the seniors at Steve Ellison Field as well. So I want to thank Mr. Victor Brazil, science teacher, for all the courtesy, 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 courtesy that he's offered us up here on the patio. Uh, he's been truly helpful in allowing us this great spot. Uh, and we can bring these games live to you. Uh, and I know so many people across the country and relatives that watch, and that's why we do it. Uh, because of you guys, uh, and that's really great. Do want to remind you again, uh, live streams are, are, are continuing as the year goes on. Probably about a month break. Our first live stream is going to be girls basketball. I don't have the exact date, but their season opener, home opener, really good girls basketball team should be fun. It's about mid-November, well, about a week before Thanksgiving. I'll be there. It's going to be cooling down then. Excited. Yeah, so we'll be, it'll be cooling down outside, but it'll be heating up in the gym. So it will be. If you want to check that out. I uh, want to thank everyone uh, with the football program here today and here at Ellison Field for all three years that we